This is A7 English Podcast, and you're listening to an adventure fantasy novel. The Desolate Era. Book 7, Stillwater City. Chapter 31, Shock and Awe, Part 1. Win. 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 Mu North Sun stood outside the Grand Ceiling Formation, staring towards Ji Ning, who was seated on that distant stone pillar. His eyes were blazing with hope. You have to win. Prior to this, he had lost two rounds in a row. In his heart, he viewed himself and Ning as standing on the same side. They were both new disciples. As for those old disciples, they were simply teaching the new disciples a lesson in accordance with that tradition. He lost. Naturally, he now hoped that Ning would win a round and gain a bit of face for them, the two new students. In addition, this blood drinker Bladask had gone too far in making the wagers so large. Junior apprentice brother Ji Ning is in for it now. Senior apprentice brother Bladask really did set a high wager. He showed no mercy at all. The old disciples were all chatting amongst themselves. But as for Nine Lotus, she stood there, staring carefully at Ning, who was within the grand ceiling formation. She said softly, My fellow disciples, it's too early to say such things. It's hard to say who will win, Junior Apprentice Brother Bladask or Junior Apprentice Brother Dark North. Junior Apprentice Brother Bladask entered the school many years ago. Can it be that he is inferior to Ji Ning? Senior Apprentice Sister Nai Lotus, it isn't very likely that Ji Ning will be able to win. All of the disciples present, North Sun included, felt surprised at the words of Nai Lotus. After all, Nai Lotus, logically speaking, should be on the side of the old disciples. Just watch. Nai Lotus still had that calm smile on her face. Blad Ask sat there atop his stone pillar in the lotus position. He noticed that Nai Lotus, standing outside the ceiling formation, was paying more attention to Ning. This caused his gaze to grow ever colder. Once the protective surface armor of the golems you two are controlling has been broken, that means that you have lost. The white-haired elder watched from afar while speaking out. Ning nodded lightly. The golems were representations of themselves. Breaking through the golem's armor, in a real battle, was something comparable to truly killing the enemy. Naturally, that represented defeat. Since you know the rules, then, begin! The white-haired elder called out. Within the vast, empty space inside the ceiling formation, the two golems simultaneously began to move. Ning controlled the thousand-word golem, while Bladask controlled the Polaris golem. Swish! Swish! The two golems retreated at the same time, pulling away from each other. Neither of them wished for their golems to be too close, because once their protective armor was breached, that would mean they had lost. Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning! Watch out for this. Blad asked, seated on that distant stone pillar, let out a loud shout. Immediately afterwards, he began to control his Polaris Golem, which had seven flying swords on its back. A savage, baleful aura filled one of the flying swords which instantly shot out, filling the entire area nearby with a dense, bloody light. Ursi Majori's Warbreaker! As soon as Junior Apprentice Brother Bladask attacked, he immediately used the Ursi Majori's Warbreaker. He really is filled with a killing intent right now. The spectating disciples in the distance were all stunned. The flying sword slashed through the skies, and as they did so, it was like an iron-blooded army was marching forth. A series of bloody lights flashed, and even the vague sounds of slaughter and war cries could be heard. They struck directly towards Ning's Thousands Words Golem. He really does have quite a bit of a killing intent. Ning sat there in the lotus position on his stone pillar. Seeing this, he just let out a soft laugh. Let me extinguish that killing intent of his. Go. Clang. One of the countless tiny swords on the back of the thousands words golem instantly flew out. When it flew out, it was only the size of a sewing needle, but soon it expanded to the size of a palm. The flashing sword flew out, and as it did, the entire area became filled with flowing water, with the flashing sword light submerged within the water. Break! Bladask's face sank. That flying sword of his, filled with a boundless killing intent, didn't give way in the slightest. It struck directly towards the flowing water. This Ursi Majori's sword, what it needed was its imposing manner. It couldn't lose that. The flying sword struck directly towards the flood of water. Splash! 
The flowing water was blasted apart, but the water then swirled and reformed around the flying sword, once more entrapping it. As the saying goes, one can swing a blade at water, but the water will still flow, even a blade that had been tempered a hundred times, when faced with this sword light that flowed with endless water, would become as weak as a finger. The first blow was filled with energy. The second was weaker. By the third, there was nothing left. Not good. Blad Ask's face changed slightly. He knew that Ning had blocked him with but a single flying sword. Formidable. He used just a single flying sword to block junior apprentice brother Blad Ask's Ursi Majori's Warbreaker sword attack. I imagine that junior apprentice brother Ji Ning isn't much weaker than junior apprentice brother Blad Ask. The azure robed man booing said with a frown. This is the flowing water sword of the Lesser Five Elements Sword. Lesser Five Elements Sword? Are you sure about that, senior apprentice brothering? The others all looked towards Buing, puzzlement on their faces. They had all heard of the famous, Lesser Five Elements Sword, but they didn't focus on swordplay. Naturally, they didn't understand the sword stances of the Lesser Five Elements Sword very well. Buing nodded. I'm sure. I've meditated on the Lesser Five Elements Sword before. This technique is the flowing water sword technique within it. I didn't expect that although Junior Apprentice Brother Dark North has just entered our school, he has already begun to gain insights into the Lesser Five Elements Sword. Nine Lotus just listened, smiling gently as she watched the battle. Bladass couldn't hear the conversation going on outside, but he could guess at it. Both sides had used just a single flying sword, but Ning had actually blocked him. How could he not feel humiliated? After all, he had joined the school many years ago. Junior apprentice brother Ji Ning, received my Polaris direwolf Sky Ripper. Blad Ask let out an angry roar. Whoosh. 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 The other six flying swords on the back of the Polaris Golem all flew out at the same time. The first flying sword flew back as well, and the seven flying swords instantly formed into a Polaris sword formation. Rumble, in midair, one enormous star after another began to appear. The seven giant stars formed into the shape of the Big Dipper, and then a flashing sword light began to expand rapidly. How woo well? At the core of this sword light, an enormous black wolf phantom actually appeared out of nowhere. The dire wolf raised its head, letting out an angry howl. And then, still howling, it charged straight towards Ning. It looked as though the dire wolf was bounding towards Ning, but in reality, those seven flying swords were launching a simultaneous attack. Go! Ning's cold voice rang out. Eight more flying swords flew out from the back of the thousands words golem. Along with the first flying sword, they instantly joined together into a simple nine palaces sword formation. Ning had acquired the nine yang sword formation in the underwater estate and this formation contained quite a few profound mysteries as well. Although it wasn't as complicated as the Lesser Thousand Swords formation, it was still extraordinary. Ning had quite a bit of ability with regards to formations, and this Nine Palaces Sword formation was quite an excellent one as well. Whoosh. 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 Nine rays of sword light howled through the air, leaping forward to greet the giant advancing direwolf. As they flew over, the light of the nine swords suddenly flashed, then transformed into more than a hundred densely clustered sword shadows. These hundred plus sword shadows then quickly transformed into drops of rain, and it was as though a hundred plus meteors of rain were pummeling into the direwolf. Smash! 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 The hundred plus meteors of rain smashed downwards, every single drop containing awe-inspiring power. Not good. Outside the formation, the azure rogue booing leapt to his feet, his eyes filled with astonishment. How could he have? Every single drop of rainwater contained awesome power. Rumble, the unceasingly destructive strikes actually completely smashed apart that baleful, heaven-menacing direwolf, and it also blasted apart those seven flying swords. How can this be? Bladask, who was seated on the stone pillar, controlling everything, had a completely different look on his face now. Swish! Immediately after disintegrating the direwolf phantom, 
several flying swords continued to charge forward, not weakening in the slightest. Howling through the air, they instantly struck against the body of that Polaris golem. Bang! They slashed straight through it, and the black, rocky exterior of the Polaris golem was instantly split open, revealing the fiery red body of the golem within. Xi Ning wins! The distant, white robe elder immediately called out in a high voice. As for Bladask, his face instantly turned completely ashen. Chapter 32 Shock and Awe Part 2 Lost I lost. How could? Bloodrinker Bladask sat there atop the stone dais, his face ashen. He couldn't believe what had just happened. When immortal cultivators engaged in a battle, life and death was separated by a hair. If they lost a single exchange, they could die. He used a golem. I also used a golem. Bladask simply couldn't accept this. The two golems have identical elemental key cores, and the same amount of elemental key. It is an extremely fair situation. What we compete in is our comprehension of the Tao, our sword arts, and other skills. How could his sword arts actually be even more powerful than mine? How could he have known that Ning had actually reached the Tao domain level long ago? The Tao domain level was, normally speaking, the level which primal Taoists were at. But of course, at the Black White College, everyone was a supreme genius, and so there were many powerful Wanxiang adepts who were at the Tao domain level. Bladask, however, was still a hair away from being able to reach the Tao domain level. Through his swordplay, he could just barely touch the Tao domain level. This was much like how, when Ning was young, when executing the Raindrop Sword, he was able to unleash the power of being one with the world with his sword attacks, even though he himself had not yet reached that level. This was one of the strengths of possessing powerful sword arts. In terms of comprehension, Ning was at a higher level. In terms of sword arts, after having been doubly baptized by the Stellar Hall of the Underwater Estate and the Black-White Diagram, and after having meditated on the Lesser Five Elements Sword, Ning's sword arts had reached a limit. In terms of soul, Ning was at the Divine Sense level. Even amongst the Wanxiang adepts of the Black-White College, only those reincarnated immortals, so few they could be counted on one hand, were comparable to Ning. In every single field, he was inferior. How could he not have lost? Senior apprentice brother Bladask, I was lucky enough to win by one stroke. Ning rose to his feet with a laugh, and the grand ceiling formation around them disappeared. With a tap of his feet, Ning flew out of the arena, landing in the distance. Bladask had an ugly look on his face. He flew out of the arena as well. He walked straight towards Ning, and with a wave of his hand, produced two jade bottles which he tossed to Ning. 800 black-white pellets and 50 kilograms of liquefied elemental essence. Take it. Ning naturally stretched his hand out to accept them. Hmph. <laughs> Ji Ning. Bladask stared at Ning, his eyes filled with a desire for battle. No wonder immortal Dian Tsai accepted you as his disciple. I have nothing to say about my defeat. Next time, however, I will challenge you again. I will wait for you. Ning laughed. If someone wanted to deliver more black-white pellets and liquefied elemental essence to him, why would he refuse? Hmph. <laughs> Bladask immediately walked towards Bu Ying. Senior apprentice brother Ying. The azure robed man Bu Ying gave him a glance. Don't worry. Leave it to me. This time, it was Ying who had set up and arranged for the new disciples to be taught a lesson, and he had also been the one to personally invite Bladask over. Clearly, now that Bladask had lost, no matter what, he, Bu Ying, couldn't just let Ning leave victoriously. Bu Ying's gaze fell towards his fellow disciples nearby. Formidable. Junior apprentice brother Dark North's power truly cannot be underestimated. This geniuses all had looks of caution in their eyes. From watching Ning's attacks just now, they sensed that Ning's power was definitely not lower than theirs. Without a certain degree of confidence, they naturally wouldn't be willing to proceed. Senior Apprentice Brothering Senior Apprentice Brothering, you are the only person who can succeed. Right, Senior Apprentice Brothering, you have also trained in the Lesser Five Elements Sword, and the time you have spent training in it is longer. Your chances of winning are greater. Everyone was saying this. Buying cursed to himself. So what if he trained in it for longer? 
Training in sword arts wasn't a matter of time. It was a matter of how much one understood regarding the Tao. An immortal training in the lesser five elements sword for the first time would, in half a day, train to an extremely high level in it. But Ng also knew that since he was the instigator of this event, no matter what, he had to get involved. One had to be able to bear responsibility for one's actions. Ji Ning had immediately won with his attack. This had caused Mu North's son to be incomparably excited. Well fought! Let those old disciples know that they can't just teach lessons to every new disciple as they please. Ning laughed. Winning was quite enjoyable. In addition, a hundred black-white pellets and fifty kilograms of liquefied elemental essence was his, just like that. Previously, when he had advanced from the early Zifu level to the peak Zifu level, he had used less than forty kilograms of it. Junior Apprentice Brother Dark North Buing emerged from the group of old disciples. Senior Apprentice Brother Ng Ning responded. Junior Apprentice Brother Dark North, your power truly is formidable. I didn't expect that shortly after joining our school, you would have already reached such a level in your understanding of the Lesser Five Elements Sword. I imagine that your insights into the Tao are at a very high level. Buing said. Ning knew that his opponent wanted to gain some intelligence about him. He immediately laughed and said, I just gained some initial insights into it and have much to learn. Buing laughed loudly. You are being too modest, junior apprentice brother. I, your senior apprentice brother, also train in the lesser five elements sword. As I watched you execute your sword arts, I couldn't help but feel my hands itch. What say you and I spar for a bit? Oh, this is what I wish for as well, Ning immediately said. Someone was delivering more gifts to him. Why wouldn't he want it? Based on Ning's calculations, especially given how strong his soul was, he felt that he should hold a major advantage over the other. There were probably not many Zifu disciples who could match him, unless a reincarnated immortal emerged to battle. What is the wager? Ning asked. Buing laughed. Naturally, just a hundred black-white pellets and five kilograms of liquefied elemental essence. Overly large wagers will hurt the camaraderie amongst us fellow disciples. Ning nodded. All right. Moments later, Ning and Buing were each seated in the lotus position atop their stone pillars. Begin, the white-haired elder barked. Instantly, the grand ceiling formation once again appeared. The golem which I have chosen is known as the Six Harmonies Golem. Senior Apprentice Brother Ying's voice rang out. Be careful, Junior Apprentice Brother. Senior Apprentice Brother. Please proceed. Ning's voice rang out as well. The two sat on opposing stone pillars, staring at each other. The two golems below stared at each other as well. Kill! Previously, Buing had a smiling look on his face but his face now turned solemn as he let out a low growl. Instantly, the six Harmonies Golem simultaneously shot out thirty-six flying swords, every single one of them covered with unique runes. The reason why this Golem was named the Six Harmonies Golem was precisely because it was capable of executing this Six Harmonies formation. Ning, seeing this, frowned. Go! Twelve flying swords emerged from the back of the Thousands Words Golem. These twelve flying swords hissed as they slashed through the air, transforming into a dense layer of rain, each containing inexhaustible amounts of power. Rumble The thirty-six flying swords swiveled as they flew, six of each forming into a formation base, with the six bases forming the six harmonies formation. In addition, the entire formation transformed into a giant windmill. Rumble The power of it crushed downwards. Crash, crash, crash. The countless droplets of rain smashed viciously against that giant windmill, but the thirty-six flying swords of the windmill swiveled about, easily dissipating the smashing power. Can't block it. This Buing truly is much more formidable than Bladask. Fortunately, I was prepared long ago. Ning's face changed, and a fierce look flashed through his eyes. The twelve flying swords under his control suddenly separated into two parts. One part spun in a circle in midair while the other formed a cross. Whoosh! The twelve flying swords merged with each other, transforming into an azure, flaming sword. Boom! The giant, azure flaming sword pierced directly through the windmill. The windmill was only able to take it for a brief moment before crumbling. 
Duality Azure Flame Sword. Booing, seated there on the pillar, saw this. His face turned ashen, and then he let out a sigh. He didn't even try to fight back, allowing Ning's Azure, Flaming Sword to pierce directly through the protective layer of his golem. Ji Ning wins! The white-haired elder once more called out in a high voice. The Dao Debate Palace was a hubbub of noise right now. Buing was definitely an outstanding figure amongst the Zifu disciples of the Black-White College, and could be considered one of the movers and shakers. In terms of power, he was far superior to Bladask. And yet, even he had been defeated by this new disciple who had just joined the Black-White College? They are all supreme geniuses, but this Ji Ning is an absolute monster. Nine Lotus watched everything happen, and she murmured in her heart. He reached the Tao Domain level at merely 16 years of age, and his soul has supposedly reached the Divine Sense level. He's absolutely a monster, like those reincarnated immortals. To lose to a monster like him, their defeats are nothing to be ashamed of. Chapter 33 Two Major Factions With a thought, Ning removed his binding from the Thousand Words Golem, then leapt 300 meters and landed outside the battle arena. He secretly sighed to himself. Although I have reached the Tao Domain level, and my soul is at the Divine Sense level, if I hadn't meditated on the Lesser Five Elements Sword and increased the power of my sword arts, it would be hard to say if I would have won, or this Buing would have won. His foundations were exceptionally stable, at the level of a reincarnated immortal. However, prior to joining the Black-White College, his sword arts had been very weak. Only after learning the Lesser Five Elements Sword had he been able to address this shortcoming. If he hadn't learned it, he would have had to rely on the power of his soul and controlled even more flying swords to achieve victory through numbers. Swoosh. Buing landed next to Ning as well. Senior apprentice brother Buing. Ning greeted him modestly. Buing sighed. No wonder immortal Dientsai accepted you as his disciple, junior apprentice brother Dark North. I wholeheartedly acknowledge my loss. You were able to simultaneously control twelve flying swords and execute the drizzling rain technique. Your level of insight is very high, and your soul is powerful. All of these things inspire admiration in me. In addition, junior apprentice brother, you were even able to execute the duality azure flame sword. I have nothing to say about my loss. Here are a hundred black-white pellets and five kilograms of liquefied elemental essence. Buing tossed two bottles to Ning, who accepted them. However, Junior Apprentice Brother, you've now defeated both Bladask and myself. Buing looked towards Ning. Make your preparations. This matter will not conclude here. After speaking, Buing began to walk towards the outside. It won't conclude here? Ning frowned, then followed him outside. Senior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, Senior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning. North Sun excitedly ran over. It was as though he was even more excited than Ning by Ning's victory. That was too incredible. And to think those old disciples wanted to teach us new disciples a lesson. Ha! They've lost two rounds in a row now. This time, the old disciples really did lose face. Ning laughed. It was nothing more than a spar. North Sun disagreed. No, this was about face. This year, there are only two new disciples, you and me. Now that you've won, Senior Apprentice Brother, as your Junior Apprentice Brother, I've gained face as well. While chatting, the two moved to the outside. As for the old disciples, none of them, including Bu Ying, Winter Iron, and Bladask, moved to speak to Ning. The atmosphere was clearly rather awkward. The only person to move closer to him was Nine Lotus. Senior Apprentice Sister, Ning felt his heart clench. Nine Lotus truly was a naturally mesmerizing figure. In terms of appearance, she could be described as a peerless beauty. Of all the beauties Ning had ever seen, she was second only to Ming Exian. But in terms of grace and aura, she was unquestionably number one. Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, Nine Lotus' voice was very soft and gentle. You must be careful. You won two rounds in a row. The old disciples won't just let things slide like this. No matter what, the traditions of our black-white college will not be broken just for you. When you go back, you need to make your preparations. Ning's pupils contracted slightly. He nodded. I, Ji Ning, have always looked forward to the opportunity to spar with my fellow disciples. 
Nilotus nodded as well, then departed. Ning glanced at the other old disciples. However, given that even Booing had been defeated, none of the others felt any confidence in being able to win, and so they naturally didn't say a word. Let's go. Ning immediately led North Sun away, and the two left the Dao Debate Palace. Swoosh. The two quickly disappeared into the night sky. They watched as Ning and North Sun left. Only now did the old disciples within the Dao Debate Palace begin to speak amongst themselves. We actually lost two battles in a row, a tall, skinny youth said in a hoarse voice. We old disciples are meant to teach a lesson to the newer disciples, to let them understand the principle that there is a heaven beyond the heavens, and geniuses beyond geniuses. This is a tradition of our black-white college that has lasted for countless years. All of us are old disciples who joined years ago. No matter what, we can't just admit defeat like this. Right. If we admit defeat, then that means that we old disciples are admitting inferiority to the newer disciples. Even Winter I nodded as well. The old disciples all nodded. This was a tradition. The old disciples were to teach the new disciples a lesson. These old disciples had joined many years ago, and although some of the weaker ones amongst them would occasionally lose to a new disciple, the stronger ones amongst the old disciples would gain a victory back in turn. If they weren't able to do so, didn't that mean that every single one of them was inferior to the new disciples? From ancient times to modern times, there has never been anyone capable of forcing the old disciples of the black-white college to admit defeat. Not even reincarnated immortals. Booing nodded solemnly as he spoke. I will go ask junior apprentice brother Chingha. After speaking, Booing left the Dao Debate Palace. Let's go! The old disciples all departed from the Dao Debate Palace, transforming into streaks of light and disappearing into the sky. The disciples of the Black White College were divided into three generations. The third generation consisted of Zifu disciples and Wanxiang adepts. Amongst the Zifu disciples, the most outstanding and dazzlingly strong one was Chingha. Chingha entered the school at 18 years of age, and had also reached the Dao domain level. Given his current level of insight, he could easily reach the Wanxiang adept level, but he needed to further solidify his foundation. Only with a sufficiently stable foundation would the Zifu lake within his body truly expand to the limit, allowing his future potential to be greater. Late night. Junior Apprentice Brother Chingha, Junior Apprentice Brother Chingha. Buying charged into the skies above a towering mountain, then immediately began to shout, his voice echoing within the entire estate. The Zifu disciple retainers and the commoner servants in the estate below all began to react. Senior Apprentice Brother Buing, why have you come to speak to me so late at night? A figure suddenly emerged from the courtyard, head upraised and staring towards Buing, who stood there in the night sky. Buing immediately landed within the courtyard. I've come here this late at night to inform you about something, junior apprentice brother. Buing shook his head and sighed. I'm ashamed to even say this. Each year, the new disciples of our black-white college will go to the Dao Debate Palace and be taught a lesson by us old disciples. In the past, the two of us experienced this as well. Ching He laughed and nodded. Right. The old disciples have all been in the school for many years. Naturally, they will win. Except we lost. Booing shook his head. Just now, several of us old disciples were at the Dao Debate Palace, sparring with the new disciples, Ji Ning and Mu North Sun. We defeated North Sun twice in a row, but afterwards, when we sparred with Ji Ning, we were defeated by him twice in a row. In fact, even I lost to the hands of junior apprentice brother Ji Ning. What? Ching Ho was shocked. Senior apprentice brother you lost? Right. That's why I came to invite you, Booing said. You can be said to be the Zifu disciple amongst us who is at the very peak of power, and so... Ching He nodded. Senior apprentice brother, don't worry. Naturally, I won't shirk my duties in this matter. Senior apprentice sister, senior apprentice sister. Nine Lotus stood there in midair, staring down towards a graceful estate below. Little sister, you came? A clear, cold voice rang out. Why don't you come in? Nine Lotus immediately landed. There was a black-robed maiden standing there, beneath the moonlight. In front of her there was an exquisitely carved wine flask and wine goblets. 
This maiden's beautiful features were absolutely superior to that of even Nye Lotus, and that cool, indifferent aura made her seem like a true immortal of the heavens. And in truth, this black-robed maiden was indeed a reincarnated immortal. Within the black-white college, she was an extremely famous reincarnated immortal, the Rainbow Flame Fairy, Yu Wei. As one of the extremely few reincarnated immortals, although she was currently only at the peak Wenxiang adept level, her status was comparable to that of the primal Taoists. Senior Apprentice Sister Nai Lotus sat down as well. Are you aware that amongst the new disciples, there is one who is apparently a reincarnated immortal as well? Are you referring to Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning? The black-robed maiden sat down, then nodded gently. I heard that immortal Dian Sai chose him as his disciple. Nai Lotus immediately said, Senior Apprentice Sister, you don't know this, but even before joining the school, Ji Ning has already reached the Tao Domain level, and his soul has supposedly even reached the Divine Sense level. His soul has supposedly reached the Divine Sense level? The black-robed maiden was rather surprised. Nine Lotus nodded. This is what my master told me. Immortal Five Craze? The black-robed maiden nodded gently. Intriguing. I didn't expect that one of the new disciples would be such an impressive figure. Nine Lotus continued. And just now, at the Tao Debate Palace, this Ji Ning consecutively defeated two of the old disciples. I trust that once this information spreads out, the old disciples definitely won't let this matter rest. No matter what, they will have to win it back. Hmm, win. Yes, it will be necessary to win a match back. The black-robed maiden nodded, then smiled. But if he really is a reincarnated immortal, given his current level of insight, he might even have some of his former memories from his past life. If you aren't careful, his power might suddenly explosively increase. Defeating a reincarnated immortal won't be an easy matter. Nine Lotus glanced at this senior apprentice sister of hers, this rainbow flame fairy Yue. Of course reincarnated immortals were terrifyingly strong. All of them had astonishing levels of talent, and when they started to train, they increased in power at a shocking rate. This Jin Ning is only 16, Nine Lotus said. The black-robed maiden laughed. If he hasn't awakened any of his former memories, Beating him shouldn't be too hard. When are they going to go challenge him? I will go and take a look. It should be tomorrow, Nai Lotus said. Fine. I'll definitely go. Yu Wei nodded. Wen Xiang adept Northmont Black Current frowned. Ji Ning? Right. Ji Ning. He consecutively defeated two of the old disciples. Even Buing was beaten by him. A black-robed Yu sat there chatting leisurely. Black Current laughed. I didn't expect that the Ji Ning who Northmont by way befriended is actually as powerful as this. I previously misjudged him. Since he is going to be challenged tomorrow, I'll go and take a look as well. Ji Ning? I heard that in the Carefree Caverns, he unleashed a Rainwater Sword domain. Clearly, he's already reached the Dao Domain level, yes? What? Dao Domain level? No wonder he is this powerful. The new disciple, junior apprentice brother Ji Ning, defeated two of the old disciples? How can we accept this? No matter what, we have to win a match back. One told ten, and ten told a hundred. There were only so many disciples in the black-white college to begin with, and most of them had known each other for many years and were on quite good terms with each other. As they exchanged this news amongst each other, by the second day, this news had already spread throughout the entire black-white college. In fact, even some of the well-connected major powers within Stillwater Commandery, such as the Northmont clan, had received word of it. For now, the other disciples all felt that, no matter what, they had to win a match back. The disciples of the entire black-white college had naturally divided into two major factions. The first was the new disciples' faction. This consisted of just Jin Ning and North Sun. The second was the Old Disciples faction, that consisted of all of the other disciples. Senior Apprentice Brother, did you just say that this disciple of mine consecutively defeated two of the Old Disciples? The black-robed, black-haired immortal Dian Tsai had a hint of curiosity in his eyes. Right. Virtually all of the third-generation disciples are going to the Tao Debate Palace. They definitely want to win a match back. 
The short elder, dressed in ragged beggar's clothes, said with excitement, Ha ha ha, it's been a long time since something so amusing has happened within our black-white college. Myself, an old man-man, just survived the ninth century tribulation, and now I've encountered this. Intriguing, intriguing. When the time comes, I'll definitely go watch. Are you going? Immortal Diensai nodded gently, then laughed. Since you are going, senior apprentice brother, as your junior apprentice brother, I'll naturally accompany you. Ha ha. Great, great, great. Intriguing, intriguing. The short elder, Immortal Five Craze, suddenly waved his hand. Now hurry up and bring out that scent of flower immortal wine and let your senior apprentice brother have a taste. Scent of flower immortal wine? But I got that in one of the minor worlds. Immortal Diensai's face turned ashen. The short elder stared at him. Hi, your senior apprentice brother probably will only be able to live another nine centuries. And you can't even spare me some wine? If you refuse to give me any wine to drink, then when Ji Ning competes against the old disciples, I'll play some underhanded tricks in secret. Immortal Dian Sai let out a long, helpless sigh. Fine, I'll give it to you. Chapter 34 Fated to be Master and Servant Fuel Watching the sun rise in the east, Ning let out a soft breath. Come, all of you, come. I'll take on all comers. He had won two consecutive battles last night. The parting words of Senior Apprentice Brother Buing and Senior Apprentice Sister Nai Lotus allowed Ning to understand that no matter what, the old disciples definitely wouldn't just let things rest. They would have to win one round of battle, no matter the cost. Ning had to admit, some of the supremely talented disciples of the Black White College would definitely find it hard to admit inferiority. However, Ning wouldn't easily admit defeat either. If he had to lose, he had to be thoroughly convinced of his defeat. If you want to defeat me, then you need to make me feel completely convinced of your superior power. Ning's eyes were filled with a readiness for battle. This entire night, he had been analyzing the Lesser Five Elements Sword. Since he knew that he had to engage in battles tomorrow, he naturally had to seize every moment. Whoosh. Ning willed it, and a flying boat appeared next to him. He prepared to go meet with his master, Immortal Diensai. After all, there were many questions he had encountered when analyzing the Lesser Five Elements Sword. Perhaps by asking his master, he would have some of his questions resolved. Swoosh! The flying boat instantly disappeared into the skies. But suddenly, a voice rang out. Senior Apprentice Brother Dark North! Ning, atop the boat, turned to look. A middle-aged man, mounted on a sword, was flying towards him. A hint of nervousness and awe was on his face, and the borders of his sleeves were decorated with white and black embroidery. Upon seeing the embroidery, Ning immediately understood that this should be a formal disciple's retainer. Every single formal disciple was able to take on ten retainers. These immortal practitioner retainers would carry out some some important tasks, deliver messages, stand as guards, etc. These were the tasks they would carry out. What is it? Ning looked towards him. The middle-aged man replied respectfully. There is someone outside the college who wishes to see you, senior apprentice brother Dark North. He calls himself Northmont Byway. Northmont Byway? Ning nodded. I'll head right over. Swoosh. He immediately directed the boat towards the black-white college's main gate. Moments later, he arrived and saw that outside the gate, Byway was seated atop his nine-star immortal carriage in an extremely ostentatious manner with the driver still that female servant construct. Ji Ning! Bai Wei, upon seeing Ning fly over aboard his boat, immediately disembarked from the carriage. Bai Wei! Ning landed. Why have you come so early this morning to the college? Bai Wei laughed, then pointed towards three people standing nearby. All of them had fairly exceptional auras. I told you before that I wanted five slots from you. These three will fill up three of the slots. As for the other two, they'll arrive after a period of time. The three of them? Ning sized them up carefully. Every single formal disciple could only have ten retainers. Once a master-servant relationship was established, they would generally be together for a century, or even centuries. These three are all not bad. Bai Wei pointed to the tallest one, a rather skinny youth. His name is Cloudship. 
He's a member of the Cloud Tribe, and an early stage Zifu disciple. Cloudship's eyes were very bright. He immediately said with respect, Cloudship pays his respects to senior apprentice brother Ji Ning. This is Cloudship's little sister. Bai Wei pointed to a devilishly beautiful, tall, willowy woman who was dressed in white muslin. This woman's eyes were extremely large, soft, and moist. Her eyes were just as bright as her older brother's. She gave Ning a deep look, then curtsied and said, Cloud Jade pays her respects to senior apprentice brother Ji Ning. Bai Wei then pointed to the final person, a seemingly ordinary youth. His name is Forgard. He was originally one of my guards, and is extremely loyal. Forgard pays his respects to senior apprentice brother Ji Ning. The ordinary looking youth also bowed with respect. Cloud Ship, Cloud Jade, and Forgard. Bai Wei laughed. They will be your retainers, brother Ji Ning. If they treat you with any disrespect at all, you can immediately expel them from the Black White College. As for myself, Northmont Bai Wei, I'll never meet them again after that. In dealing with them, you do not need to consider the question of giving me face at all. Ning nodded. Here are another hundred ordinary mortals. They were all carefully selected, and all have some special talents. They are skilled in calligraphy, painting, cooking, and the likes. Bai Wei pointed towards a group of ordinary mortals. These were almost all women, with only two or three dozen being men. When Bai Wei pointed towards them, they all fell to their knees in respect, not daring to show the slightest hint of discourtesy. Sorry for the trouble, Brother Bai Wei. Ning nodded. Bai Wei asked, If you aren't in a hurry, how about in a few days you, me, and that Moon North Sun have a little get-together? Very well, Ning hurriedly added. Right. There's something I need to trouble you about, Brother Bai Wei. Oh? Pray tell, Bai Wei said. Ning nodded. Here's the situation. When traveling to Stillwater City, I encountered three early stage Zifu disciples of the Meng clan. Their names were Meng Xian, Meng Rock, and Meng Jun. Afterwards, they met with one of their seniors of their clan, someone they addressed as Uncle Ming, a balding, middle-aged man. Of the three of them, Meng Rock once used a forbidden technique and harmed his foundations. I imagine that it will be hard for him to enter a school, and so I want to give one of the retainer positions to him. Only, I have no idea where he is living, so I'd like to ask you to help investigate, Brother Bai Wei. This is a minor matter, Bai Wei said with confidence. The Meng clan is a major clan. The Heavenly Treasures Mountain will definitely be keeping track of the movements of the members of their clan. I'll go investigate, and will immediately find out. All right, if there's nothing else, I won't tarry. Bai Wei once more walked to his nine-star immortal carriage. The two clasped hands towards each other, bidding each other farewell, and then the immortal carriage transformed into a blaze of light, disappearing into the horizons. With but a thought, Ning made his flying boat increase in size, to a ship that was many tens of meters in length. All of you, come aboard! The three retainers and the many mortal followers all boarded the ship, and then the ship soared into the skies, flying at high speed towards Dark North Peak. Byway, riding within the nine-star immortal carriage, quickly arrived at the Heavenly Treasures Mountain. I heard that the new disciple of the Black White College, Ji Ning, defeated two of the old disciples in a row last night. What sort of a person is this Ji Ning? He is that amazing? No idea. All I heard is that he was accepted by Immortal Dian Tsai as his apprentice. As soon as he left the carriage, Bai Wei overheard two immortal practitioners engaged in a conversation. The Heavenly Treasures Mountain was a place where fish and dragons intermingled. There was quite the free flow of information here. Oh? A hint of a smile appeared on Bai Wei's face. My brother Ji Ning actually did something so incredible last night, and I didn't even know about it. Hmm. First, I'll help him locate that Meng Rock fellow. Since my brother Ji Ning remembered him, I imagine that this rock must have some extraordinary qualities. East Stillwater City within an exquisite estate. Meng Rock was seated here, drinking wine. Little Sister Xian, let me. Little Sister Xian, I'll help you package these. Meng Jun was quite the busy bee right now, helping Meng Xian take care of and package some of her household items. They had been living in their third uncle's residence in recent days, 
but since they had entered a school, the school had given them three days' time to prepare. Then, they would leave Stillwater City and head to the headquarters of the main sect, located a million kilometers away from Stillwater City. Meng Jun glanced sideways at Meng Rock, who was drinking wine gloomily, then sighed. Rocky, just endure it for a bit. In a few more years, when your injuries can no longer be detected, you'll be able to join a school as well. I must say though, it seems as though karma has bound myself and little sister Xian together. We actually ended up in the same school by coincidence. Haha, <laughs> what luck. Still drinking wine, Roche's face sank, and he crushed the beast's skull goblet in his hand to dust. Humph. <laughs> June let out a snort then turned his head and left. Despicable fellow. Rock gave him a glance. Actually, he was able to guess that June had been following after Xian. And so, when Xian had entered a school, June had chosen that same school. Xian and June were equally talented, and so it wasn't strange for them to both join the same school. Rock had been infatuated with Xian since he was young, but the same was true for June. This made Rock feel all the more miserable. Despicable fellow! Rock ground his teeth. I hate the fact that I... Big brother Rocky. Xian stood there next to him. Rock raised his head, looking towards her. Don't give up. I believe that you will definitely succeed. Xion's eyes were slightly red. Rock instantly felt a warm feeling in his heart, and he nodded strongly. Succeed? Humph. From nearby, a strange, bizarre-sounding snort could be heard. Little sister Xion, let's go. We should go to our Thousand Rivers school. Xion gave Rock a deep look. But in the end, she had to leave. She had to go to the main sect. Had to embark on her immortal path. Rock silently watched as she left. Little Xion. Wait for me. Rock silently said to himself. However, the fact that he had been kicked out by various schools for three days in a row made Rock feel all the more miserable and frantic in his heart. Within the Black White College. Ning was carefully observing Cloudship, Cloud Jade, and for guard. Although Bai Wei had brought them here, if Ning truly disliked them, he could still kick them out. After all, masters and retainers would be together for a very long period of time. As for Cloudship, Cloud Jade, and for guard, they were rather nervous as well. This for guard was originally a guard, and is quite loyal. Ning had immediately felt well disposed towards for guard. Cloudship, upon seeing me, immediately smiled. He knows how to flatter. As for his little sister, Cloud Jade, what the hell was Bai Wei thinking? Why'd he deliver such an alluring girl to me? Cloud Jade definitely could be considered an alluring girl. In terms of appearance alone, she was not even inferior to Ming Xian, and more attractive than even Nai Lotus. In addition, her entire body seemed to naturally exude a certain magnetism, and her soft, moist eyes were extremely seductive as well. It seemed as though ever since she had seen Ning, she was either consciously or unconsciously attempting to seduce him. For guard. Why do you have a name like this? Ning asked. For guard said solemnly. Originally, I had no name. Afterwards, I was given a name by the young master and served him for many years. Perhaps the young master felt that I would have great future accomplishments, and so he gave me this life-changing chance. And thus, he also gave me a Taoist title, for guard. He wished for me to forget that I was once a guard, and wished for me to truly become a formidable immortal practitioner. Ning nodded. Whoosh. The ship descended towards Dark North Peak. The nearby cloud ship, Cloud Jade, and for guard all nervously awaited Ning's questions, but unexpectedly, Ning didn't ask them a single thing. Uncle White. Upon landing, Ning spoke out, and the white water hound immediately appeared. Ning glanced towards the three retainers and many commoners, then said in a clear voice, All of you listen up. This is Dark North Peak, of the Black White College. Here in my Dark North Peak, you must always obey the words of my Uncle White. Whatever Uncle White tells you to do, you do. You must never disobey. Yes. Cloudship, Cloud Jade, Forgard, and the crowd of commoners all assented respectfully. Uncle White, those three are retainers, while the rest are all ordinary mortals. Ning looked towards the Whitewater Hound. 
I'll hand full responsibility for all matters in Dark North Peak to you, Uncle White. Give them their instructions and tell them about the rules here at the Black White College. The White Water Hound immediately transformed into mist, and when he reformed, he appeared as a white-robed, white-haired man. The white-robed, white-haired man had a very gentle look in his eyes, and he seemed to extrude a natural aura of friendliness, as though he brought the gentle, warm spring wind with him. He laughed and said, Ning, son, go ahead and leave these things to me. All right. Ning immediately transformed into a ray of light, quickly departing from Dark North Peak. As for the others, including the retainers, they were restricted as to where in the black-white college they could go. A short while later, Ning arrived before the mountain peak which was the residence of his master, Immortal Diensai. Ji Ning! Enter. A calm voice rang out by Ning's ears. Yes, master. Ning immediately descended towards the peak. Chapter 35 Immortal Diensai's Guidance There was no one within the hall, only the black-haired, black-robed Immortal Diensai. The immortal was seated in the lotus position atop his jade bed. Ning stepped into the room, then immediately bowed with respect. Master. Immortal Diensai nodded slightly. He looked at Ning, a hint of amusement visible on his face. Ji Ning, I heard that yesterday, you defeated two of your senior apprentice brothers? Yes, Ning said. Only, I'm afraid my fellow disciples won't let the matter rest. Today, they will probably come challenge me again. Thus I have come to you, Master, in the hope that you can provide me with some guidance. Hmm. At least you are grounded. You didn't grow arrogant just because you defeated two Zifu disciples. Immortal Diensai nodded. Everyone who has been accepted to the Black-White College is a supreme genius. The third generation is primarily divided into Zifu disciples and Wanxiang adepts. Ming listened carefully. My Black-White College has more than a hundred Zifu disciples, and more than 200 Wanxiang adepts. Why? Immortal Diensai continued. These disciples are all at fairly high levels of comprehension. If they wanted to enter the Wanxiang adept level, I imagine that all of them would be able to do so. The reason why there are still a hundred plus Sifu disciples is for several reasons. First of all, they want to solidify their bases of power and prepare an immortal foundation. The second is because they wish to increase their level of insight and comprehension. That way, when they encounter the three calamities and nine tribulations, they will naturally have a greater chance of surviving them. Ning nodded. Three calamities, nine tribulations. As an immortal practitioner, Ning naturally knew of them. The power of these trials was something that was related to time. The more time passed, the more powerful they would become. In addition, they were also related to one's karmic merits or sins. The greater the sin, the more difficult the tribulation. Finally, they were also related to one's level of power. If they had trained for the same period of time, the tribulation for a primal Taoist would be more dangerous than the tribulation for a Wanxiang adept. But of course, there were many other variables. It was difficult to predict the power of the three calamities and nine tribulations, and in the end, it was the guillotine held over the necks of all immortal practitioners. However, there was one commonality, strengthen one's level of comprehension. Strengthen one's soul. Strengthen one's Tao heart. The more stable one's foundation was, the greater one's chances at overcoming the tribulations would be. It is precisely because they wish to prepare for the three calamities and nine tribulations, and because they wish to establish a foundation to become a celestial immortal, that none of them are in a hurry to make their breakthrough. Immortal Diensai explained. Generally speaking, new disciples will remain at the Zifu stage for ten or so years. But of course, those who are slightly weaker in terms of comprehension might stay at that level for 50 or 60 years. As for the extremely talented ones, they'll stay at that level for half a year before making their breakthrough. This is why the Wanxiang disciples represent the true elites of the third generation. Immortal Diensai looked at Ning. Ning nodded. He understood. The Wanxiang adepts of our black-white college are different from the Wanxiang adepts of other schools. They are true geniuses amongst Wenxiang adepts. Immortal Diensai said. For other schools, every so often, they might have one or two Wenxiang adepts who reach the Tao domain level. But for our black-white college, almost every single Wenxiang adept is at the Tao domain level. Hearing this, Ning felt shock in his heart. 
There are some who are even more formidable. They have an incredibly deep comprehension of their chosen Tao, and perhaps even many insights into other Tao's as well. They are able to reach the Tao domain level in multiple, different Tao's. There are some who are even more monstrous. While at the Wanxiang Adept level, they have completely understand an entire Tao path. Dot. Hearing this, Ning's face instantly changed. A complete Tao path? In other schools, generally speaking, only immortals will comprehend an entire, complete Tao path. But in our black-white college, every single primal Taoist has comprehended an entire Tao path, and amongst the Wanxiang adepts, a few of the most talented, most monstrous of the adepts have comprehended an entire Tao path as well. However, Ji Ning, you have no need to feel embarrassed. These geniuses who were able to comprehend an entire Tao path, two of them are reincarnated immortals, while the other three have been training for more than 200 years. They might break through to the primal Taoist level at any moment. If you stay at the black-white college for a bit longer, you'll understand a few things. One of them is this. Our black-white college has an unspoken rule that only after one has comprehended a complete Tao path will one make a breakthrough to the primal Taoist level. Immortal Dian Tsai looked towards Ji Ning. Once young adepts were the true elites amongst the crowd. For example, Ning himself. Once his Zifu Lake expanded to the limit, he probably wouldn't hesitate at all and break through to the Wanxiang Adept level. Thus, those who remained behind at the Zifu Disciple level were, generally speaking, the average to below average bunch amongst these supreme geniuses. Wanxiang Adepts can be divided into three levels. The first level has only reached the Tao Domain level. The second has reached the Tao Domain level in multiple Daos. The third level has comprehended a complete Tao path. Immortal Dian Tsai looked towards Ji Ning. Don't worry. This time, your fellow disciples amongst the Wanxiang Adepts level won't interfere too casually. They'll first have the most powerful Zifu disciples make their attempt. But if even they are unable to defeat you, only then will the Wanxiang Adepts make their moves. No matter what, however, those supreme few who have comprehended a complete Tao path will not interfere. If they did, that would be going a bit far. Ning nodded. Master, how many reincarnated immortals are there amongst the Wanxiang adepts? Ning was curious. Immortal Dian Tsai laughed. You disciples are always curious about the reincarnated immortals. Actually, it's even possible that you yourself might be a reincarnated immortal. Amongst the Wanxiang adepts, there are three who have been verified to be reincarnated immortals. Two of them spent 80 years in training and have comprehended a complete Tao path, while the other one has trained for 20 or so years. After having heard me say so many things, you should now understand the situation. Immortal Dian Tsai sighed. You've only defeated two of the Zifu disciples, and they aren't even two of the strongest Zifu disciples, much less the Wanxiang adepts. Your student understands. Ning nodded. Immortal Dian Tsai concluded. All right. Time to display your sword arts to me. Show me everything without holding back anything. You won't be able to damage this hall. All right. Ning didn't hesitate at all. He immediately executed his most powerful sword attack, the tripartite lotus sword. The dark north sword in his hand shot out, and as it did, it divided into three colors. Lotus flowers began to bloom with incomparable beauty, but within the beauty, there was a sword light with astonishing power. The tripartite lotus sword? Immortal Dian Tsai laughed. The Lesser Five Elements Sword I, your master, have also studied the Lesser Five Elements Sword. This sword attack you just displayed can be considered to have a tenth of its grace and charm. A tenth? Ning blinked. Just a tenth? Immortal Dian Tsai shook his head. What do you expect? The Tripartite Lotus Sword focuses on it being tripartite. It requires balance. Your comprehension into these three Daos, however, clearly shows that your understanding of the Tao of Rainwater is much stronger, while the other two are much weaker. Ning was speechless. You've only developed your Rainwater Sword domain. If you were to develop two other Tao domains, then at that point in time, you would be able to display the true, tripartite Lotus Sword. Immortal Dian Tsai said. Ning nodded in acknowledgement. He had to admit, it was true that the, tripartite Lotus Sword, required balance. His comprehension into the various Daos, however, was unbalanced. 
Your comprehension of the Tao of Rainwater is stronger. Immortal Diensai said. Since that's the case, then I'll help you retrofit your tripartite lotus sword into a neo-tripartite lotus sword. Immortal Diensai immediately waved out a sword finger. Slash. A sword light instantly flashed, and wherever it passed, flowers began to bloom. Only the green color within the flower buds was noticeably stronger, while the other two colors served to accentuate it. Four hours later, Immortal Diensai's guidance came to an end. I've already explained as much as I can regarding the mysteries and secrets of the Neo-Tripartite Lotus Sword and the Three-Foot Sword S First Stance, Immortal Diensai said. Given your current level of understanding, you should completely focus your attention on analyzing these two sword arts. When the day comes where you are able to release the power of both sword arts, come find me again. Yes. Ning bowed with gratitude. The saying was true. Listening to a master say a few words was superior to training by oneself for a year. The neo-tripartite lotus sword was something which he had already begun to vaguely grasp. Most likely, he would soon be able to unleash its power. As for unleashing the true power of the original, tripartite lotus sword, he would have to wait until he comprehended three Tao domains. When the three became one, he would be able to unleash the most power possible from the tripartite lotus sword. What he was able to unleash right now was nothing more than some scraps. As for the first stance of the three-foot sword, that was simply unfathomably profound. The three-foot sword focused more on the heart. Training in the sword was also training in the heart. Swoosh! Ning immediately boarded his flying boat and departed from his master's residence. The golden crow hung high in the sky. The Tao Debate Palace, atop the Tao Debate Peak. Today, this place was incomparably lively. One streak of light after another flew towards here, riding on flying swords, flying boats, flying chains, flying gourds, flying red banners, flying leaves, and all sorts of curious magic treasures. One after another, they flew into the Tao Debate Palace. Senior Apprentice Brother Ai Sen, weren't you wandering outside? I just so happened to be over at the Rain Dragon Guard's place, and I heard that one of our new disciples, Ji Ning, defeated two of his Zifu disciple colleagues in sequence. I'm quite curious, so I came over to take a look. Quite a few fellow disciples have come today. It has been a long time since our black-white college has been so lively. The two figures chatted amongst themselves as they flew to the Tao Debate Palace. The battle arena was at the heart of the Tao Debate Palace. At the sides of the arena were many chairs. The higher-ranking disciples of the college sat down, while the Zifu disciples remained standing to the side, chatting amongst themselves and in no rush to sit. After all, who knew how many fellow disciples would come today? Senior Apprentice Brother Northmud Blackcurrent came as well. Senior Apprentice Brother Gatherform came as well. One Wanshiang adept after another arrived, all quite well known. One high-ranking leader after another arrived. Naturally, these junior fellow disciples all had blazing looks in their eyes. As latecomers, they naturally had limited experience in adventuring in the outside world. But these fellow disciples who had joined more than a century ago already had shocking stories and legends about them that circulated in the outside world. It was actually quite a frequent occurrence for the Wanxiang adepts of the Black White College to be able to battle at a higher level and combat even primal Taoists. It's Senior Apprentice Brother Holy Fire. Senior Apprentice Brother Holy Fire. Even Senior Apprentice Brother Holy Fire came as well. The entire Tao Debate Palace was now filled with disciples. All of them, Zifu disciples or Wanxiang adepts, turned to look. A bald, barefoot, handsome youth who was dressed in fiery red robes came walking in. His forehead had a svastika symbol in the middle, and wherever he passed, it was as though a sea of flame moved with him, as the temperature of the surrounding area instantly skyrocketed. Hold fire! He was an absolute leader amongst the third-generation disciples of the Black-White College. Although he wasn't a reincarnated immortal, he had still comprehended an entire, complete Tao path. He could become a primal Taoist of the college at any moment. Senior Apprentice Brother Holy Fire. Black Current was the first to draw close to him. Black Current. Holy Fire glanced at Black Current, then said calmly, Has the new disciple, Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, arrived yet? Not yet. 
There was a junior apprentice brother who went quite some time ago to junior apprentice brother Ji Ning's dark north peak, but he hasn't come yet. Black Current explained. Holy Fire nodded then strode forward, taking a seat atop one of the centermost stone seats. The fellow disciples seated around Holy Fire were all formidable figures within the college. For the likes of the Zifu disciples, they could only stare at him from afar. After all, they didn't have a relationship with him. This is a 7 English podcast and you're listening to an adventure fantasy novel. The Desolate Era Chapter 36 Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning Welcomes All Chapters The winter wind was quite refreshing. Ji Ning stood atop his boat, soaring through the skies, and in his mind, he continued to think back to the scenes of his master, immortal Dian Tsai, displaying sword arts for him to see. Master's sword arts have truly reached an inconceivable level. Ning Sai to himself Tian Sai has often referred to as the second coming of immortal Northwalker, and also as the disciple of the Black-White College with the greatest chances of becoming a celestial immortal. Immortal Tian Sai's sword arts vastly surpassed the level which Ning was able to comprehend. HM? Someone's here? As his flying boat reached the air above Dark North Peak, Ning saw that there were currently two people standing outside the gates to his estate. It was a white-robed Moon North Sun and Winter Ein, dressed in white cotton clothes. Swoosh. Ning landed on the ground. Master. The ordinary mortal standing at the gate immediately saluted. Junior apprentice brother North Sun, senior apprentice sister Winter Ein, why are you here? After landing, Ning smiled towards them. Only now did Winter Ein let out a long sigh of relief. Junior apprentice brother Dark North, can it be that you don't know about today's matters? Of course Ning knew. Senior Apprentice Sister Winterine, are you referring to the challenges at the Dao Debate Palace? Of course. Winterine nodded. Today, many of our fellow disciples have hurried over there. Even some of our fellow disciples who were not present in the college, upon hearing this news, have hurried back. I've came to invite you to the Dao Debate Palace, Junior Apprentice Brother Dark North. Ning nodded. Winterine continued. Let's hurry. I imagine many of our fellow disciples are growing impatient. All right. Ning looked towards the nearby North Sun. Junior Apprentice Brother North Sun, why didn't you go to the Dao Debate Palace and instead came to find me? Need you ask? North Sun stared. The entire Black White College only has two new disciples, you and me. The two of us are on one side. All those people at the Dao Debate Palace are older more senior disciples. If I go there, what am I supposed to do? Just stand there like an idiot and be stared at by everyone? Ning laughed. Let's go. There was no way to back off now. If he backed off, he would be looked down upon by everyone. He might as well openly go welcome the challenges. Whoosh. The three rode atop their respective magic treasures or construct quickly disappearing into the skies as three rays of light which sped towards the Dao Debate Palace. It was rare for so many fellow disciples to be gathered here at the Dao Debate Palace. Every single one of the disciples present today could be described as truly heroic figures. Why hasn't that junior apprentice brother Ji Ning arrived yet? That young junior apprentice brother Ji Ning, he wouldn't be afraid, would he? The fellow disciples were all chatting in small groups amongst themselves as they waited. It was, however, almost noon. Some of those who had come earlier had been waiting for nearly four hours. Naturally, they were growing rather impatient. Suddenly, three figures flew towards them from afar, then landed at the gates to the Dao Debate Palace. This instantly attracted the attention of many of their fellow disciples. He's here. Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning came. That's Junior Apprentice Brothers Ji Ning and North Sun. Next to them is Junior Apprentice Sister Winterine. Ji Ning and North Sun had appeared at the grand ceremony of initiation. After all, most of the people were still able to recognize them with one glance. Senior Apprentice Brother Holy Fire, seated in the center, glanced at them then said softly, That fur-clad one is Ji Ning? North Mount Black Current, seated next to him, immediately said hurriedly, Right, he is Ji Ning. Just from the look in his eyes, I can tell that his Tao heart is very resolute. Holy Fire said softly. Black Current replied. If Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning knew that you were praising him like this, Senior Apprentice Brother, I imagine he would be endlessly overjoyed. 
After entering the Dao Debate Palace, Ning went directly to the side room where he had previously activated the Thousands Words Golem, and then brought the Golem to return to the hall. He stood there, in the hall, sweeping everyone with his gaze. There were familiar figures, such as Nai Lotus and the others. There were several figures he didn't recognize, but who the other fellow disciples surrounded. Clearly, these were extremely high-ranking figures of the college, such as that bald, fiery-robed youth, that black-robed maiden, or that sloppy-looking fat youth, or that large, muscular youth whose entire body gleamed with magic treasures but whose skin was jade white. Those people being surrounded by others are probably the most supreme members of the third generation. They have probably either comprehended an entire Tao path or are reincarnated immortals. Ning mused to himself. Swoosh. Ning leapt forward like a streak of light, moving 300 meters and landing on a distant stone pillar. Staring at his surroundings, he said in a clear voice. My senior fellow disciples. Instantly, the entire Tao debate palace grew silent. Yesterday. I was lucky enough to defeat two senior apprentice brothers, Ming said in a high voice. Thus, today I have come again. Any of my senior fellow disciples who wishes to discuss the Tao with me can come up and do so. As for the wager, I've recently joined the school and can't afford too large a wager, and so we'll just go with the smallest wager of a hundred black-white pellets and five kilograms of liquefied elemental essence. I will wait here. Anyone who wishes to discourse on the Tao with me can come up. His words concluded. The entire Tao debate palace remained quiet for a moment of time. That seemingly sloppy-looking, pudgy youth who was surrounded by many others laughed, his face covered with delight, as he looked towards Ji Ning, who stood there in the distance atop the stone pillar. This junior apprentice brother Ji Ning really is straightforward and passionate. I like him. This sloppy-looking, pudgy youth was... Awe-inspiringly enough, the undisputed number one figure of the third generation of black-white college disciples. In the outside world, he was often referred to as the Sloppy Taoist, but his actual Taoist title was Three Fat. Although he was not a reincarnated immortal, Taoist Three Fat was able to suppress the two reincarnated immortals in might, and so became known as the number one figure amongst the third generation. One truly couldn't judge by looks alone. Hear that? Even Little Sloppy likes this Ji Ning. In a corner of the Dao Debate Palace, the similarly sloppy-looking short elder chortled. Next to him, the black-haired, black-robed immortal Dian Tsai said resignedly, Senior Apprentice Brother Five Craze, why did we have to come here to the Dao Debate Palace? We could have stayed in our own estate and used a water scrying technique. Wouldn't we still be able to see everything going on here? Our apprentice nephews such as the headmaster are definitely all watching this in their own estates through a water scrying technique. The short elder glanced sideways at immortal Dian Tsai. When we watch here, we can also hear the conversations going on between the third generation disciples. That's so much more fun. As for little Sloppy, he really is the disciple I love the most. Even his thoughts are identical to mine. Don't worry, we'll watch here secretly, and those third generation disciples won't notice a thing. Alas, Immortal Diensai shook his head helplessly. This old fellow really was getting crazier and crazier. Birds of a feather flocked together. Sloppy had even given himself the Taoist title Three Fat, and was incredibly sloppily dressed. Immortal Diensai was an extremely strict person. Naturally, he disliked this tremendously. But there was nothing he could do. Old Crazy was the oldest of the loose immortals of the Black White College while young Crazy was the most talented disciple the Black-White College had to offer. I hope that I can live to witness Little Sloppy become an Earth Immortal. If I can witness him become a Celestial Immortal, I'll die with no regrets. The Short Elder suddenly turned somber and serious. Senior Apprentice Brother? Immortal Jensai was startled. The Short Elder stared at the fat, sloppy-looking youth who was surrounded by many other disciples. Just you wait and see. Little Sloppy will definitely be more powerful than me. Immortal Diensai's gaze fell towards the distant stone pillar, and towards Ji Ning who was seated atop it. This was the only disciple under his tutelage. It's about to begin. The short elder's eyes lit up. It's the fellow called Xingha. There were very many third-generation disciples gathered here at the Dao Debate Palace. The first to stand out was Xingha the man who was publicly acknowledged as the strongest of the Zifu disciple students. Swoosh. 
An azure-robed figure moved forward like a blur, flying directly towards the distant stone pillar before coming to a halt atop it. The golem he controlled moved with him, landing on the arena below. Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning The azure-robed figure stared at the distant Ning. My name is Ching Ha. I joined a few years before you did, and would like to discuss the Tao with you. All right. Ning nodded. Begin. The white-haired elder let out a loud shout, and the grand ceiling formation instantly covered the entire arena. Ning sat down calmly in the lotus position, and senior apprentice brother Ching Ha did the same. Be careful, junior apprentice brother. I am going to use a secret art which I discovered when adventuring in the outside world. It is an art which a dying senior left behind, which allows for the control of many flying needles. This isn't a technique which our school has records about, Ching Ha said. Senior apprentice brother, feel free to use it, Ning replied clearly. The territory controlled by the Grand Xia dynasty was too vast. Over the course of countless years, there were quite a few legacies left behind by fiend gods or various major powers. As for legacies left behind by senior immortal cultivators, those were countless beyond counting. Only, these relic sites also involved tremendous levels of danger. Without having enough ability, one could not rashly enter them. Watch carefully. Ching He appeared quite relaxed, but suddenly, his gaze sharpened. Swish, 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 swish. Countless flying needles suddenly flew out of the body of the golem below him. Those countless jade green flying needles spun in midair, resonating with each other and actually forming an enormous green scorpion. This giant jade green scorpion's eyes were flashing with a ferocious intent. For some reason, this caused Ning to feel alarmed. Not easy to deal with. He had been planning to once more use his duality azure flame sword, but he instantly decided to use his current most powerful technique, the neotripartite lotus sword. What he didn't know was that Ching He, as the publicly acknowledged number one expert of the Zifu disciples, had a level of insight into the Tao that was comparable to that of most Wanxiang adepts already. He, too, had reached the Tao domain level. In terms of insight, he definitely was not inferior to Ning. In addition, he had spent many years analyzing this Scorpic God Needle's technique. Given his power, if Ning didn't fight back at full strength, he would probably be crushed instantly. Swoosh! Three swords suddenly lit up. One transformed into a watery light, the second into a fiery glow, and the third into an azure aura. The three flying swords formed into a tripartite formation, and as they flew forward, suddenly transformed into an enormous lotus flower, which had an incomparably sharp and fierce sword light within the blossom. He wins. The short elder in the corner of the Tao Debate Palace sighed. This sword art was born from the tripartite lotus sword, but is more heavily focused towards the water element of the five elements. However, this power really is quite something. Ji Ning just entered the college, and yet was already able to learn such a powerful technique. He's definitely not weaker than any ordinary Wanxiang adept disciples. Sword Immortals. They are famous for their combat abilities. With the heart of a sword immortal and a sword art such as this, if he encounters someone at the same level of insight, he will win for sure. As the short elder was speaking, the sword light in the form of a lotus flower was clashing repeatedly in midair against the giant, jade green scorpion. With each clash, a few of the needles would be knocked loose. After six consecutive clashes, the giant, jade green scorpion completely shattered, transforming back into countless flying needles. Slash. The protective armor of the god needles golem was pierced by that sword light as well. The entire Tao debate palace instantly fell silent. He had lost? The most powerful of the Zifu disciples, Ching He, had actually lost? If even he had lost, could it be that one of their senior apprentice brothers at the Wanxiang adept level would enter the fray? For the sake of a new disciple, they were going to have a Wanxiang adept do battle? Ji Ning wins. The white-haired old man spoke out, and his voice echoed within the Tao Debate Palace. Chapter 37 Two Clawed Rain Dragon Guard On the distant stone pillar, Ching He rose to his feet then clasped his hands. I lost. I wholeheartedly acknowledge my defeat. Ji Ning rose as well, also clasping his hands, and then he swept the entire palace with his gaze, looking towards each of his fellow disciples. In a clear voice he said, 
Are there any other fellow disciples who wish to exchange pointers with me? His voice echoed within the entire palace. Alas, Ching He shook his head, then leapt 300 meters and landed next to the white-haired elder. He took out two jade bottles, then placed them in front of the elder. This was the wager he had lost. Turning his head, he left. For a period of time, the Dao debate palace was silent. Nobody took up the challenge. Even junior apprentice brother Ching He lost. The Dao debates are a competition of one's comprehension of the Dao, as well as one's skills. It doesn't have much to do with one's elemental key. Even many of the Wanxiang adepts amongst us are only on par with junior apprentice brother Ching He. I imagine that only those who have comprehended multiple Dao domains are capable of defeating junior apprentice brother Ji Ning. Of course there were people who could defeat Ning. In addition, there were quite a few. For example, those three reincarnated immortals who were at the Wanxiang adept level. Anyone who had comprehended a complete Tao path could effortless crush Ning. There were also a pile of disciples who had comprehended multiple Tao domains. But which one of them would stand out? Which of my senior fellow disciples wishes to provide me with some guidance? Ning stood there atop the stone pillar, speaking in a clear voice. If no one else comes, then I shall retire. In this moment, Ning felt filled with a heroic aura. How joyous. He faced a group of supreme geniuses, and he, a newly recruited disciple, was challenging them. This really was a wonderful feeling. Since my other fellow disciples aren't going to participate, then I'll embarrass myself by volunteering. A clear, cold voice rang out and a white-robed, white-haired youth strode forward. With a single step, he transformed into a streak of light which entered the side room. Soon, he returned with a golem by his side. That senior apprentice brother Blood Shadow. Senior apprentice brother Blood Shadow is skilled as a fiend god body refiner and at close combat. He isn't skilled in a golem-based Dao debate. I heard that senior apprentice brother Blood Shadow is already a two-clawed rain dragon guard. In a real battle, he probably isn't one whit inferior to an ordinary primal Taoist. But senior apprentice brother Blood Shadow's power primarily stems from his various divine abilities, his blood-forged weapons, as well as his fiend god body refining technique, the indestructible Blood Shadow body. In terms of controlling golems though, he's a bit weaker. As the white-robed, white-haired youth appeared, a buzz of conversation swept the entire palace. Ning's ears twitched. He couldn't help but feel secretly surprised. What a tremendous background this senior apprentice brother Blood Shadow had. The rites of blood forging, although the likes of the G clan had never heard of it, the Black White College had. Only, one needed 500 black white pellets to trade for the technique. And he's actually a two clawed rain dragon guard as well. Ning was privately shocked. After entering the rain dragon guard, one would become an ordinary one clawed rain dragon guard, and the Black White College would reward you with a thousand black white pellets. If you became a two-clawed rain dragon guard, you would be rewarded with 5,000 black-white pellets. Upon becoming a three-clawed rain dragon guard, the reward would be increased to 15,000 black-white pellets. However, it was very difficult to become a two-clawed rain dragon guard. Generally speaking, only someone at the primal Taoist level of power could become one. Only a very few, exceptionally monstrous Wanxiang adepts were able to reach that level. As for that so-called genius of Snow Dragon Mountain, Shui Hongi, by comparison, he was far inferior to this senior apprentice brother Blood Shadow. Swoosh! The white-haired, white-robed Blood Shadow's body flickered, and he appeared on the opposite stone pillar. Junior apprentice brother Ji Ning. Blood Shadow stared towards Ning. I'm more used to engaging in close combat. I'm not that skilled in controlling magic treasures to attack. However, I'm still a bit stronger than junior apprentice brother Ching Ha. You must be careful. I await your instructions, senior apprentice brother, Bing said solemnly. This was no joke. A freak capable of becoming a two-clawed rain dragon guard, even one who was primarily a fiend god body refiner, definitely wouldn't be weak when controlling magic treasures. Fortunately, he would be doing so through the golems, and so his divine body and divine abilities would be of no use. Otherwise, there would be no need to compete at all. Ning would simply admit defeat. Begin! The white-haired elder called out in a high voice. Rumble, 
the grand ceiling barrier once more covered the entire arena. Ning sat down in the lotus position. Blood Shadow did the same. Junior apprentice brother, be careful! Blood Shadow called out in a cold voice. Instantly, the strange flying swords on the back of the Nine Swords Golem began to fly out. Nine of the queer flying swords flew through the air, beginning to emit a dense, bloody light. The flying swords were all connected by the bloody light, and they quickly formed into an enormous... something. It had enormous cicada wings, a head with three horns, a mouth that was as long and sharp as a blade, and a savage, flashing gaze. In fact, the killing aura coming from this creature was even more terrifying than that of the direwolf which Blood Eater Bladask had summoned. Mosquito? Ning, staring the beast that had appeared, couldn't help but feel astonished. This was a titanic mosquito. Swoosh. That sinister-looking, baleful giant mosquito of blood suddenly charged forward, howling through the air, its blade mouth formed from one of the flying swords. The power and invisible pressure from this creature caused Ning's heart to clench. Neo Tripartite Lotus Sword! Ning didn't hesitate at all, immediately executing his most powerful sword art. Instantly, three flying swords flew out from the back of his thousands words golem. They soon formed an enormous, blooming lotus flower of sword light which stabbed directly towards that baleful, heaven-defying mosquito of blood. Bang! The two attacks were both as fast as lightning, and they instantly crisscrossed in the sky. The blooming lotus flower's sword light trembled, beginning to grow unstable. It's going to collapse! Although senior apprentice brother Blood Shadow is not skilled in using flying swords, it isn't too hard for him to suppress a young, newly recruited disciple. He's won. Quite a few fellow apprentices nodded musingly to themselves. As for North Sun, he clenched his fists nervously as he watched, his heart filled with worry. It was as though he himself wanted to personally charge up. You must win. You must win. Not good. As soon as he began fighting, Ning began to sense how terrifying the penetrative power of the blood mosquito's blade mouth was. Bang! The blood mosquito moved as fast as a shadow, quickly smashing yet again against the lotus flower. Instantly, the blooming lotus flower crumbled, and the three flying swords were scattered to one side. However, Ning had expected this long ago. He had already prepared six more flying swords, which shot out from the back of the thousands words golem. Go, go, go. A savage look was in Ning's eyes. Whoosh. 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 Every three flying swords formed a blooming lotus of sword light, and even the three original scattered swords once more reformed into a giant lotus of sword light. All of a sudden, the air was filled with three enormous flashes of sword light, each of which bloomed into giant lodi. They flew out in a straight row, simultaneously striking towards the blood mosquito. Meanwhile, Ning's eyes were filled with savagery as he controlled them in attacking. What? He's actually able to simultaneously unleash three of those tripartite lotus swords. How can this be? The spectating disciples were all speechless. Using top-tier sword arts was tremendously taxing on one's mental faculties. For something like the tripartite lotus sword, most would be able to unleash just a single one at most. To unleash three at the same time was rather ridiculous. At the corner of the Dao Debate Palace, Immortal Dientsai nodded gently. He simultaneously executed multiple sword arts. The nearby short elder shook his head repeatedly. There's only two possibilities. The first is that his current comprehension of the Tao is far beyond the level of this sword art, and so it is simplicity itself for him to use it. Only then can one simultaneously use multiple sword arts. The second is that his soul is incomparably powerful, and so he can easily withstand the pressure this sword art creates, allowing him to use it multiple times simultaneously. Either one had a high level of insight, or one had an extremely powerful soul. Your disciple's soul is at the divine sense level? The short elder looked towards immortal Dian Tsai, who nodded. Right. As I thought, the short elder said softly, if he has a divine soul at the divine sense level, I imagine he can execute two or three more sword lights. This battle, your disciple is probably going to win. The giant blood mosquito blurred, then transformed into three smaller blood mosquitoes, simultaneously defending against the three, 
tripartite lotus swords. Boom! 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 There, in midair, the three tripartite lotus swords battled against the three smaller blood mosquitoes. Everything was a blur as they clashed and battled against each other repeatedly. Each side wanted to break through the protective armor of the other's golem, but they also wanted to block the enemy attacks. For now, they were battling to a standstill. Go, go! Ning's eyes were bloodshot, and the veins on his forehead were protruding. Clearly, he was now going all out. Instantly, six more flying swords flew out from the back of the thousands words golem. The sky was soon filled with two more tripartite lotus sword attacks. A total of five tripartite lotus swords were surrounding and attacking the blood mosquitoes. Eh? Seated in the distance, Blood Shadow's face changed. He immediately willed the three blood mosquitoes to once more transform into a giant blood mosquito. The cicada-like wings of the giant blood mosquito fluttered, wrapping around that nine swords golem, while the blade beak struck repeatedly against those tripartite lotus swords. The five neo-tripartite lotus swords attacked wildly in unison. Five. Five tripartite lotus swords. The spectating disciples were all rather stunned. They knew exactly how much stress would be placed on the soul when one executed five powerful sword arts simultaneously. To an ordinary person, dividing their mind to carry out just two tasks simultaneously was already very difficult. Dividing one's mind to execute multiple supreme sword arts, and five in total, at that. Junior apprentice brother Ji Ning's comprehension must be at a very high level, or his soul must be very strong. He cannot be underestimated. It seems as though senior apprentice brother Blood Shadow is about to suffer from it. If one remains perpetually on the defense, one will eventually lose. Under the repeated strikes of Ning's five neo-tripartite lotus swords, in the end, the blood mosquito wasn't able to block an attack, and the protective armor of the golem was breached. Ji Ning wins! The white-haired elder called out in high voice. Only now did Ning finally relax. He had won. He had actually defeated a two-clawed rain dragon guard. Although this rain dragon guard was more skilled as a fiend god body refiner and in using divine abilities, and although this was just a competition of the arts one could use based on their comprehension of the Tao, the fact that he had defeated a two-clawed rain dragon guard still filled Ning's heart with incomparable joy. I lost. Seated atop the distant stone pillar, Blood Shadow rose to his feet. Shaking his head, he laughed. Junior apprentice brother, you are already so impressive after entering our school. In the future, you will definitely not be any weaker than me. Senior apprentice brother, you praise me too much. Ning rose as well. If we were in a real life and death battle, I probably wouldn't have been able to withstand a single blow from you. Blood Shadow laughed. This junior apprentice brother of his was incredibly talented, and yet clear-minded and modest. He hadn't turned smug from his victory in the Tao debate. Most likely, in the future, this youth would have astonishing accomplishments. He was worth befriending. Ha ha! Blood Shadow laughed, then with a flicker, disappeared from the arena, reappearing before the white-haired elder, who he gave two jade bottles to. Ning took a deep breath. He had gone all out in his earlier battle against Blood Shadow. The sword art he had used was the strongest one available to him, and by relying on the power of his soul, he had gone all out to generate five of those tripartite lotus swords. This was his limit. He had nothing further up his sleeve, and would probably lose the next match. However, if he was going to fight, he was going to fight to the bitter end. Are there any other senior fellow disciples who would like to exchange pointers with me? Ning looked about the room and spoke in a clear voice. His voice echoed in every corner of the palace. Chapter 38 My heart holds only the sword, the sword immortal's path. The entire Tao debate palace once more fell silent. Everyone turned to look at their neighbors. Since Ji Ning was even able to defeat Blood Shadow in a Tao debate, defeating him would be no easy task. Who would be the next? His heart, it has changed. In that quiet corner, the short elder suddenly spoke out. This last Tao debate was a form of baptism for your disciple. Immortal Dian Tsai turned to look towards Ning as well. There was no hesitating in Ning's eyes at all. Instead, there was a frightening desire for battle. Right. Immortal Dian Tsai nodded lightly. 
His heart has indeed changed. It is pure now. Before this, he had many miscellaneous thoughts in his heart, but right now, all he desires is the next battle. This is indeed a rare baptism for his Tao heart. Ning had only one thought in his heart right now, to engage in the next battle. If he was going to fight, he was going to fight to the very end. The entire Tao debate palace was silent for three breaths. Finally, an azure-robed woman walked out. It is Senior Apprentice Sister White's now. Senior Apprentice Sister White's nose, Celestial Silk that formation, is extremely powerful. In terms of just the Tao, not even Senior Apprentice Brother Blood Shadow is a match for Senior Apprentice Sister White's now. Right. I wonder if this Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning has anything else left up his sleeve. If he does not, he is probably going to lose. Conversations were going on everywhere. As for Senior Apprentice Brother Holy Fire, surrounded by many fellow disciples, he stared into the distance, then said softly, If my guess is correct, that was the limit of Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning's power. This next battle, Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning is going to lose. When he encounters Junior Apprentice Sister White's nose, Celestial Silk that formation, this Junior Apprentice Brother is going to lose. This was the soft comment by the fat, sloppy-looking youth as well. Senior Apprentice Sister Will Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning win? Nai Lotus was next to the black-robed maiden, who stared into the distance. Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning is probably at his limit. This should be his final battle. The short elder, standing in the corner of the room, nodded as well. It's about time. This series of Tao debates should be coming to a conclusion. Your disciple is at his limit. Right. Immortal Dian Sai nodded lightly, continuing to stare towards his disciple. On the pillar. Ning stood there, waiting quietly. Senior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, win. Win. I believe in you. You will definitely win. Mu Norsen's fists were clenched tightly, and he called out in a high voice in the distance. Ning smiled towards him. The azure-robed woman stepped out from the side door, leaping gracefully atop the opposing stone pillar. She looked towards the distant Ning, her gaze bringing a cold, quiet feeling. Looking at her was like looking at a sickly, yet beautiful woman. She finally spoke out. Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, I have chosen the Skynet Golem. Be careful. Senior Apprentice Sister, please feel free. Ning sat down in the lotus position, and the azure-robed woman did the same. The two stared at each other. Begin! The white-haired elder let out a loud shout. Rumble, the grand ceiling barrier once more covered the entire battle arena. Go! The gaze of the azure-robed woman, seated in the lotus position, was cold and dim. The skynet golem beneath her instantly began to emit one line of silk after another, transforming into streaks of light. Neo tripartite lotus sword! A sharp look flashed through Ning's eyes. Not hesitating at all, he immediately, consecutively released fifteen flying swords from the Thousands Words Golem, creating five, tripartite lotus swords. These five flashes of sword light, they blossomed into lotus flowers, streaking forward to greet the flashing lines of silk. Whoosh! The silken rays of light suddenly slashed out in Arius arcs. Instantly, the entire world seemed to change, as these silken ribbons of light actually formed a giant, completely sealed spherical region, trapping Ning's five, neo-tripartite lotus swords, within them. The five flashes of sword light wildly struck at one location, and a large bulge appeared on the side of the silken ribbons of light, but it still successfully kept the sword light trapped within. Constrict! The azure-robed woman, seated in the lotus position, shouted softly. The silken ribbons of light, in the shape of that giant sphere, began to swivel and shrink, beginning to crush down upon the five flashes of sword light within it. Although Ning could release these fifteen flying swords and control new ones, if he wasn't able to defeat this technique, even if he unleashed more flying swords, the end result would simply be that they would be trapped. Break! Ning strove to control his swords to break through. Go! The azure-robed woman once more pointed. Whoosh! Yet another silken ribbon of light flew out from the golem this one moving directly towards Ning's Thousands Words Golem. Hmph. <laughs> Ning's gaze turned cold. Three more flying swords flew out from the Thousands Words Golem's back, transforming to yet another, tripartite lotus sword, 
and intercepting the ribbon. There were six tripartite lotus swords that had been unleashed, and Ning's eyes were now completely bloodshot. Taxing. This was incredibly taxing. But Ning didn't think of anything else. In his heart, there was only one thought, to use all of his power and fight to the bitter end. To force his flying swords to unleash the greatest amount of power possible. In this moment, the only thing in Ning's heart was the sword within the arena. Ning and the azure-robed woman stared at each other, the golems they were controlling clashing against each other time and time again. Clearly, the azure-robed woman held the upper hand, but no matter what, she wasn't able to defeat Ji Ning. In particular, with that giant, spherical region, one enormous bulge after another would appear. Clearly, the five rays of sword light within were still struggling, and with greater and greater power. The azure-robed woman couldn't help but focus a great deal of her attention on that sphere. In the corner of the Tao Debate Palace, the short elder's eyes suddenly lit up, and he murmured to himself, My heart holds only the sword. Immortal Diensai stared at his disciple as well. He, too, had noticed Ning's change. My heart holds only the sword, Immortal Diensai said softly. Finally, his sword heart has finally begun to reach this level. Now things are unclear, the short old man sighed. This disciple of yours truly is a rare talent. This Tao debate palace is currently filled with the disciples of our black-white college. So many geniuses are present. This disciple of yours is welcoming all challengers, and so in the end, he will definitely be defeated. And yet, this process has caused his sword heart to grow brighter and brighter. It's still early. Let's see if he can actually comprehend it thoroughly. Immortal Diensai stared at Ji Ning. Stared at him without blinking. Simultaneously executing six tripartite lotus swords was Ning at his absolute limit, and he even felt his head going dizzy. But Ning didn't think of anything else. The only thing he wanted to do was fight. Fight with all his power. His heart was completely focused on those flying swords of his. In this moment, Ning, who had gained insight into the heart of a sword immortal long ago, was currently seeing his own sword immortal's heart grow brighter and brighter. In fact, one memory after another began to flit up through his mind. Ji Ning, I am going to demonstrate the first stance of the three-foot sword to you, the lustrous sword heart. Prior to this series of Tao debates, Ning had gone to see immortal Diensai, who had carefully explained the first stance of the three-foot sword to him. This is the first stance of the three-foot sword. Sword light flashed like fire, slashing through the air but not dissipating. This, too, is the first stance of the three-foot sword. A ray of sword light flashed like water, circling and spinning in the air, as though the sky itself had been parted from the world by this layer of water. This, too, is the first stance of the three-foot sword. A cyan light that tore open the skies themselves. One sword technique another another, they were clearly different sword techniques. Some were average in power, while others were incredibly powerful. But according to Immortal Diensai, all of these techniques were the first stance of the three-foot sword. The three-foot sword is a supreme sword technique which leads to one of the grand das, the Tao of the sword. In order to become a true sword immortal who has comprehended the grand Tao of the sword, the first thing you need is a sword heart. Over many years of training, you have long ago unconsciously developed the heart of a sword immortal, but the so-called sword heart requires one to truly have supreme loyalty to the sword. You must understand your own sword heart. Once you truly comprehend your sword heart and learn what it means to be a sword immortal, only then will you have opened the gates to actually becoming a sword immortal. That will be the moment when you will naturally learn how to execute the first stance of the three-foot sword. The first stance of the three-foot sword, luster sword heart. After your sword heart becomes lustrous and bright, you will be able to see the true path a sword immortal must follow. The scenes of immortal Diensai displaying the first stance of the three-foot sword, the lustrous sword heart, played over and over in his mind. Some of the attacks were extremely weak, while others were extremely strong. However, all of them were flashing through Ning's mind, and Ning felt vaguely moved. He began to dimly understand something, although he didn't fully comprehend yet. However, he knew that he had already begun to gain a few insights. Whoosh! Sword light continued to flash and dance. 
The tripartite lotus sword continued to flash in the air, and the sword light grew sharper and sharper, the more growing mightier and mightier, to the point where they began to press down on the silken ribbons of light. Rumble. The five tripartite lotus swords within the enormous spherical region were beginning to struggle more and more forcefully as well. One giant bulge after another appeared on the surface of the sphere of silken light, each bulge greater than the last. White Snow, the distant azure-robed woman who was seated in the lotus position, began to sweat. What? Holy Fire, watching from afar, had a changed look on his face. The fat, sloppy-looking youth's eyes instantly turned round. How the hell, he actually, he actually made a breakthrough in comprehending the sword. The black-robed woman's face, formerly as cold as frost, suddenly had a look of shock appear on it. A sword immortal? Bang! A sudden explosion rang out. The sphere of silk and light, which had been stretched to its limits, finally exploded. Silk ribbons scattered everywhere, and the six tripartite lotus swords once more rose into the skies with incomparable sharpness. The power of the swords was clearly much greater than before, and they charged directly towards the Skynet Golem. Soon, the protective armor of the Skynet Golem was shattered. Ji Ning wins! The white-haired elder called out in a high voice. A look of disbelief filled the face of the azure-robed woman. Someone had actually made a breakthrough mid-battle? She couldn't help but mumble to herself. A monster, he really is a monster of the Tao of the Sword. Ning rose to his feet, turning his gaze towards the entire hall. He called out in a high voice. Are there any other senior fellow disciples who wish to exchange pointers with me? The short elder in the corner couldn't help but say. A true genius of the Tao of the Sword. He really is a genius of the Tao of the Sword. This Ji Ning was born to walk the path of the Sword Immortals. His innate affinity towards the Sword surpasses that of others. In fact, we can use the word monstrous to describe it. In addition, he has a heart which is supremely devoted to the Sword. Right. Immortal Dientsai stared at the distant Ji Ning. He was meant to be a Sword Immortal. Yet another disciple has gone up. The short elder nodded. It's good that he did. What Ji Ning needs right now is battle experience. The greater a pressure is brought to bear on him, the more lustrous his sword heart will become. Perhaps, through these battles, he might even comprehend the first stance of the three-foot sword, lustrous sword heart. Immortal Dian Tsai mused to himself. Ning stood there atop the stone pillar. On the other stone pillar was a black-robed youth. Ning's eyes seemed to be filled with the light of the sword, and he said in a clear voice, Senior Apprentice Brother, please make your move! Chapter 39 Three-Foot Sword, The First Stance Junior Apprentice Brother, for you to gain sudden enlightenment regarding the sword in a moment of battle means that you truly are a marvelous talent for training in the sword. No wonder Immortal Diensai took you on as his disciple. The black-robed youth said calmly, Junior Apprentice Brother, my techniques are far more vicious than Senior Apprentice Sister White's now. You must be careful. Senior Apprentice Brother, feel free to use everything you have. Ning sat down in the lotus position, and the black-robed man did so as well. The two stared at each other from afar. The surrounding area was silent once again. Previously, the two once young adepts, Blood Shadow and White's now, had been defeated consecutively. The person who had now joined the fray, Venom Blood was naturally even more formidable than the two of them in a discourse on the Tao. Otherwise, he wouldn't have come. Go! 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 The black-robed youth's eyes flashed with cold light. Instantly, oily jade hooks began to fly out from the back of the golem he was controlling in the arena below. Eighteen oily green poison hooks slashed through the air, and while flying over, the tips of these eighteen poison hooks began to faintly glow with a venomous, tricolor light. The eighteen poison hooks flew straight towards the thousands words golem which Ning was controlling. It seemed as though the power of this attack was compressed. He didn't sense any danger at all. Eh? Ning's face changed slightly. A tricolored poisonous light? Previously, he had fought against Blood Shadow and White Snow. Blood Shadow was apparently someone who focused on a single Dao, and had mixed in his insights into other Daos into his techniques. Much like Ning, he had reached the Tao domain level in just a single Tao, and not in the others. However, Blood Shadow had reached an extremely deep level of understanding into that Tao, 
most likely far surpassing Ning's understanding of his own. Ning had to rely on the power of his divine soul to defeat Blood Shadow. As for White's now, she should have mastered two different Tao domains. And this Venom Blood should have mastered three different Tao domains. Immortal Diensai had told him that after he reached the level of having three Tao domains, he would be able to unleash the true power of his tripartite lotus sword. But this Venom Blood had already reached this level. So what if you have gained three Tao domains? Go! A fierce sword light flashed in Ning's eyes, and eighteen flying swords instantly flew out from the back of his thousands words golem. The eighteen flying swords slashed through the air, instantly booming into lotus flowers and transforming into eighteen flashing sword lights of the tripartite lotus swords. Although a sword light formed from three swords was very powerful, when dealing with a foe who shot out eighteen attacks, Ning naturally would use eighteen of his own to deal with it. A competition on quantity? Ji Ning had never feared anyone in this regard. Cling! Clang! Swish! Eighteen blooming lotuses of sword light on one side, and eighteen venomous tricolored hooks on the other. It was as though eighteen immortal practitioners were controlling them. They clashed in midair time and time again. Those eighteen venomous tricolored hooks possessed shocking power and were able to completely suppress Ning's attacks. But Ning's sword light attacks were aligned with water and possessed tremendous resilience and elasticity. In addition, the tremendous pressure caused Ning to once more enter that earlier battle mode, to enter the mindset of discarding everything, leaving behind only the sword in his heart. My heart holds only the sword. Kill! 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 The lotuses of sword light flew about, growing sharper and sharper, to the point where even the distant, spectating disciples could visibly notice that the power with which Ning controlled his tripartite lotus swords was slowly growing. The sword lights seemed to be growing sharper, to the point where they were slowly taking on a life of their own. They were continuing to grow more powerful. The might of the lotus sword lights continuously rose. He's still in a prachna state of comprehending the sword. Holy fire stared into the distance. This junior apprentice brother possesses truly terrifying potential. He truly is a marvelous student of the sword. The power of the sword light is continuously rising. Can it be that this junior apprentice brother is really going to enter the first stage of the sword immortal today? The fat, sloppy-looking youth watched quietly. On the path of immortals, where were many subtle, varying branches of enlightenment, such as the Inyang branch, the Taiji branch, the sword immortal branch, and more. Sword immortals traversed the grand Tao of the sword. Sword immortals had always been famous for their combat power, and could be described as the branch most suited for combat. For example, Immortal Dian Tsai, or Immortal Northwalker, the most famous figure in the entire history of the Black-White College. They were all sword immortals. Formidable. The black-robed maiden let out a soft exclamation of praise as well. As for Nine Lotus, upon hearing this, she immediately stared towards Ning in the arena, her eyes filled with curiosity. In the corner of the Tao Debate Palace, the short elder was leisurely holding a calabash of wine. Taking a mouthful of the immortal wine, he glanced sideways at immortal Diensai, who was staring at the battle without blinking. Five Krays let out a snickering, strange laugh. Junior apprentice brother Diensai, don't worry. Judging from the situation, this disciple of yours is almost there. Soon, he shall truly understand what his sword heart is. Hmm. Immortal Diensai's lips moved slightly, but his eyes continued to focus unblinkingly on the battle going on. This was, after all, his very first disciple. The black-robed youth, Venom Blood, continued to sit there in the lotus position, the look on his face growing increasingly ugly. How can it be like this? A prajna state of enlightenment should have a limit. How it is that his sword light is continuously rising in power? At first, he was at a disadvantage, but now he's slowly beginning to gain the upper hand. When exactly will there be a limit to this prajna state? What the hell is he gaining insights into? The black-robed youth gritted his teeth. For the likes of the sloppy Taoist and the other supreme disciples, they were able to tell at a single glance that Ning was walking onto the path of sword immortals. However, Venomblood's experience was clearly a bit lacking. All he knew was that Ning was in the middle of a prajna state of enlightenment, but he had no idea that Ning was embarking onto the path of sword immortals. 
In midair, those 18 lotus flowers of sword light clashed more and more frenetically against those 18 venomous tricolored hooks. Those venomous hooks were struggling as much as they could, but they were clearly at a disadvantage. Gur! The black-robed youth's gaze flashed with a fierce light, and a berserk feeling filled his heart. Those 18 venomous hooks instantly began to transform, forming an enormous venomous tricolored hook that was more than 30 meters long. The entire venomous tricolored hook glowed with a hazy light, and it swept directly towards Ning's thousands words golem. Break! The 18 lotus flowers of sword light instantly transformed as well. With six flying swords forming a formation base, they instantly changed into an enormous, tripartite lotus sword, which went to welcome the attack. Bang! An explosive collision. The venomous hook was instantly blown apart. The enormous, tripartite lotus sword, howled through the air, piercing directly through the protective armor over the body of the Venomhook Golem. Xi Ning wins! The white-haired elder's voice rang out once more, and at the same time, the grand ceiling barrier began to disappear. I lost. A gloomy look was in the eyes of the black-robed youth, who had struggled for so long, and yet had still lost. He gave the fur-clad youth seated atop the other stone pillar a glance from the corner of his eyes. Then, he leapt forward, transforming into a streak of light as he left the battlefield. He handed the two jade bottles to the white-haired elder, then turned and left. The entire Dao debate palace was completely silent for a moment. And then, all sorts of discussions rang out. He lost. Senior Apprentice Brother Venom Blood lost. Senior Apprentice Brother Venom Blood has gained three Dao domains. Even Senior Apprentice Brother Venom Blood lost. What should we do next? Variations on this conversation filled the entire Dao Debate Palace. Many of the disciples were saying the same thing. If even Venom Blood had lost, which of them should go up next? Well done! Senior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, well done! North Sun resolutely supported Ning. He was the only person who called out in support of Ning, and he and Ning were the only members in the new disciples' faction. The other fellow disciples were all chatting amongst themselves and also discussing who amongst them should be the next to go up. Only none of them noticed that something unusual was happening to Ji Ning right now. In fact, not even the primal Taoists that were watching this through a water scrying technique were able to notice. After all, they weren't actually present and able to witness things firsthand. Only two did, Immortal Fi Craze and Immortal Dian Tsai. They noticed something unusual about Ning. After defeating the black-robed youth, Venom Blood, Ning hadn't risen to his feet as he had in the past. Instead, he continued to stay seated in the lotus position. Since his aura, Immortal Five Cray's eyes were growing brighter and brighter. Ji Ning's aura, his aura is sharpening and intensifying. Right. Immortal Dian Tsai's eyes were shining as well. He stared fixedly at Ning, seated in the lotus position atop the stone pillar. For a powerful sword immortal like Dian Tsai, he could feel that the distant Ji Ning was also beginning to emit a similar sword aura as Dian Tsai himself had. Although it was incredibly weak, it was slowly beginning to manifest. He's growing more and more powerful. Immortal Fi Craze couldn't even be bothered to drink wine. He stared excitedly at the distant Ning. I feel as though he has completely changed into a sword. He made the breakthrough. A smile appeared on the face of Immortal Dian Tsai as well. As soon as his words came out, the distant Ning arose from the lotus position, coming to his feet. When he had been battling against whites now, Ning's mind had become filled with the scenes of his master, Immortal Dian Tsai, teaching him about the sword. At that time, he had gained a vague feeling for what the lustrous sword heart was. Now that he had battled Venom Blood, his insights had grown even deeper, and the power of his sword light was growing increasingly great as well. In the instant he had defeated Venom Blood, he felt as though he were a bubble that had stretched to its limit, then instantly exploded. All of those doubts and questions in his heart had vanished. Ming's heart had become truly lustrous. If you wish to become a sword immortal, you must have the utmost sincerity towards the sword. The sword, and the sword in your heart. If you have the sword in your heart, then even with a rock, a throwing hammer, or a wooden stick, you'll still be able to execute sword arts. For a sword immortal, Everything is part of the Tao of the Sword. The Rainwater Tao, the Taoists of Wind, Fire, and other Taoists, 
they will all be merged into the Tao of the sword. The sword is my body. The sword is my life. The sword is my path. Ning opened his eyes. His eyes, his entire body, every single part of him seemed to be brimming with sword key. It was as though Ning himself was a peerless sword. The sword of a sword immortal was the sword immortal himself. He was the sword, and he could use any magic treasures in executing sword arts. The sword of a sword immortal was his Tao. This Tao, when taken to its absolute peak, led one to supremacy amongst the three realms. The sword of a sword immortal was what he relied on. On his path as an immortal cultivator, only by using the sword, would he be able to carve a path to the very top. If gods blocked him, he would kill gods. If Buddhas blocked him, he would slay the Buddhas. He would carve a path through all which would oppose him, and he would rely on his sword to do this. I want for my mother and father to be able to live forever. I want my loved ones to be able to live joyful lives. I want for tragedies to never befall me. I want to never again be controlled by the hands of fate. Ning's sword heart was now completely shining and translucent. All of his hopes, his desires, his dreams, they were all embodied within his sword. His body, his life, even his future hopes and aspirations, they were all entrusted to the sword. The sword was what he would rely on to carve out his future and his path. The first stance of the three-foot sword, the lustrous sword heart. Ning instantly comprehended the very first stance of the three-foot sword. There were many different ways in which the first stance could be executed. What one needed to do was to release the technique in accordance with the insight one had gained into one's own sword heart. That would be enough. Ning rose to his feet. Standing there, atop the stone pillar, he stared at his fellow disciples in the Tao Debate Palace, then once more spoke out. Are there any other fellow disciples who wish to provide me with guidance? Chapter 40, That Chop The black-white college disciples within the Tao Debate Palace began to turn their gazes towards a small number of people. Venna Blood was already quite a powerful once young adept in terms of the Tao Debates, and yet even he had been defeated by Ji Ning. Then, in order to defeat Ji Ning, they would need someone even more powerful. There were only so many who fit the criteria. There were only ten or so disciples who had multiple Tao domains and were extremely strong. Given the situation, I would like to test your strength for myself, junior apprentice brother Ji Ning. A white-robed man who was standing next to Holy Fire suddenly stood out with a calm laugh. Northmont Black Current? Senior apprentice brother Northmont Black Current is about to engage. Senior apprentice brother Black Current's five energies grand grappling hand technique is astonishingly strong, far more so than senior apprentice brother Venomblood's technique. If Senior Apprentice Brother Black Current engages, he will definitely win. Debates rang out once again. Black Current, amongst the Wanxiang adepts of the Black White College, could be considered a well-known figure. But of course, in normal, real battles, the Fiend God Disciples would be even stronger. The likes of Blood Shadow, for example, possessed real combat power that was simply heaven-defying. On the battlefield, Fiend God Body Refiners possessed an innate advantage to begin with. Although Black Current was a key refiner, if one only looked at comprehension of the Tao, he definitely was one of the most impressive of the disciples who had comprehended multiple Tao domains. He vastly surpassed Venom Blood and the others. Northmont Black Current? Ning looked towards him, immediately recognizing him. When he had first gone to visit the Black White College, he had encountered this Black Current fellow. Back then, Black Current had held him in no regard. Brother Bai Wei back then described this Northmont Black Current as a viper dressed in a sheepskin. Now, it seems, at least I see the sheepskin part. Black Current had a smile on his face. He moved with leisurely grace and was dressed in white clothes. Indeed, he appeared quite elegant, and it seemed as though he had quite a few friends. Soon, Black Current emerged from the side room with a construct. With a step, he flew directly atop the stone pillar and his golem also landed at the arena below. Junior apprentice brother Ji Ning. Black Current stood on the pillar, staring into the distance. Laughing, he said, When I first met you, I had no idea that I would be discussing the Tao with you today at the Tao Debate Palace. The changes of the world truly are marvelous and remarkable. To be able to battle with you, senior apprentice brother, 
I, too, am amazed by the countless transformations of the world, Ning replied. Black Ern nodded gently, but the desire for combat was quite evident in his eyes. Because he was born from a fairly remote branch of the Northmont clan of Stillwater, he had always looked down upon those main lineage disciples who had relied on the protection of their parents. He had long ago relegated Ning to the side of people such as Baiwei. Ning's earlier repeated successes had caused him to feel all the more unhappy. His talent is quite exceptional. However, it's enough for him to have won this many battles. Black Current mused to himself. Suddenly, a white-haired, white-robed man standing amidst the many fellow disciples within the Dao Debate Palace spoke out. Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning. Ning turned his to look, and as he did, he clasped his hands. Senior Apprentice Brother Blood Shadow. Blood Shadow was a bit weaker in terms of the Dao debate, but in a real battle, he was definitely one of the top-ranked disciples of the third generation. Junior Apprentice Brother, first you defeated three Zifu disciples, then you defeated myself, White Snow, and Venom Blood. And now you are going to battle with Northmont Black Current. I am truly in admiration of you. Junior Apprentice Brother Black Current is exceptionally talented, while you, Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, are a peerless genius. It is hard to say who will win this fight. I'm willing to take out a treasure and add to the intrigue of this battle. If you are able to defeat Junior Apprentice Brother Black Current, I will give this treasure to you. As soon as these words came out, there was instantly a hullabaloo. Blood Shadow's words were rather damaging to Black Current's face, and he clearly was closer to Ji Ning's side. Humph. <laughs> Black Current felt some unhappiness in his heart but Blood Shadow was one of the third-generation disciples he could least afford to irritate. On the surface, he maintained his calm, smiling demeanor. How can I accept this? Ning immediately said. No need to be humble, Blood Shadow replied. This treasure is a mortal-ranked magic treasure. To me, it's not very useful. When I was carrying out an assignment for the Rain Dragon Guard, I accidentally entered an immortal estate and I was lucky enough to manage to pick up a sword formation technique. I saw that you, Junior Apprentice Brother, are skilled in controlling flying swords, and quite a few of them at once at that. This flying sword formation I acquired is a, Heavenly Spirits, Earthly Fiends, sword formation with a total of 108 flying swords. They are useless to me, but to you, Junior Apprentice Brother, they will definitely be of great use. However, if you want to acquire them, You'll have to show off your abilities in this battle, Junior Apprentice Brother. The white-robed, white-haired Blood Shadow had a smile on his face. He did indeed have a very good opinion of Ji Ning. He had also been the first of the Wanxiang adepts to engage Ning. In reality, he was simply throwing a brick to attract Jade, seeking to draw out the others. He often engaged in life-and-death battles, and so his senses were exceptionally acute. He could vaguely sense that the distant Ji Ning was like a sword, and he had understood that this junior apprentice brother of his would have an unlimited potential. In taking out this set of flying swords, although he said that it would be the reward for a victory, even if Ning lost, when the time came, Blood Shadow could still find an excuse to give it to Ning. And so, the two would naturally grow closer to each other. I will definitely work hard, Ning said. How could this mortal-ranked flying sword formation be truly useless to Blood Shadow? If nothing else, he could take it to the Heavenly Treasures Mountain and exchange it for quite a few elemental badges. Clearly, this senior apprentice brother wanted to befriend him. That kid Blood Shadow is the first to move to befriend your disciple. The short elder held the gourd of wine in his hand, and was drinking it while chatting leisurely. Immortal Dientsai nodded lightly. Blood Shadow is also a truly heroic figure amongst the third generation. He stands on the side of your disciple, so he's a heroic figure? The short other gave him a stare then said with pursed lips. Still, to tell the truth, although this kid Blood Shadow is a bit slow in terms of comprehending the Tao, he's moved stably and confidently. In particular, he's quite good at enduring suffering. Of the various fiend god body refining techniques, the indestructible Blood Shadow body is described as the most painful technique to train in. If one is successful, however, the results are bizarrely, astonishingly powerful. In addition, this kid, Blood Shadow, often takes on dangerous missions for the Rain Dragon Guard. With his special, unbreakable body, he has walked the path between life and death on multiple occasions, 
and his power is increasing at a faster and faster rate. His divine ability is fairly powerful as well. Now, when he first joined, he was unremarkable, but now he's one of the most powerful third-generation disciples. I imagine that in a few more centuries, he will have become one of the most powerful members of our black-white college. You have such a good view of him? Immortal Dian Sai was surprised. The short elder sighed. Although comprehending the Tao is important, the Tao heart is even more important. Once you've seen as much as I have, you will understand. All right. Immortal Dian Sai gave Blood Shadow a long, deep look. Battle's starting. The short elder's eyes lit up as he stared at the distant battle. Ning and Black Current had each already begun to control their golems in combat. Junior apprentice brother Dian Sai, who do you think will win? As I see it, although your disciples has comprehended the first stance of the three-foot sword, that first stance involves comprehending one's own sword heart. What is his sword heart like? No one knows. How powerful will the techniques he unleashes be? Hard to say. But this five energies grand grappling hand of black current is far more powerful than the technique that Venom Blood Kid was using. The short elder looked at Immortal Dian Tsai, eagerly awaiting a look of concern to appear on his face. But Immortal Dian Tsai remained as solemn as ever. What is his sword heart like? We'll know if we watch. Oh. The short elder mumbled a response, then shook his head and sighed. Oh ho ho, your disciple is at a disadvantage. Seems as though it'll be dangerous for him. Everyone watching what was going on within the sealed arena was holding their breaths. Will this junior apprentice brother Ji Ning be able to produce another miracle? Holy Fire's eyes were narrowed. It seems as though the sharpness of his sword light is no longer increasing. Has his prajna state come to an end? The fat, sloppy-looking youth frowned as he watched. If it has already come to an end, it's hard to say who will win. Senior apprentice sister, will junior apprentice brother Ji Ning be able to win? Nai Lotus asked. The black-robed maiden, the rainbow flame fairy, just watched silently without saying a word. Win, win, win. North Sun and Winterine were standing together in a corner. North Sun's fists were tightly clenched, and his eyes were round. Within the grand ceiling formation. Although Ning, seated in the lotus position atop the stone pillar, was at a definite disadvantage, those nine, tripartite lotus swords, were continuing to struggle and resist the enormous five energies grand grappling hand. However, by the looks of things, if they exchanged a few more blows, the tripartite lotus swords were going to collapse. Ning was very calm. He didn't panic in the slightest, which caused Black Current to laugh coldly in his heart. It's about time for you to lose. What he didn't know was that Ning was currently storing up his power. In his heart, the various insights that he had gained into the sword were surging out in waves. To be carefree. To do as I please. To force even fate to beat a retreat. Ning's eyes suddenly exploded with a terrifying sword intent and an astonishing sword intent radiated from his entire body. The first stance of the three-foot sword, lustrous sword heart. Ning's gaze solidified, and instantly, a rumbling sound could be heard. Every single flying sword on the back of the thousands words golem flew out, including the flying swords he had used before. There were a thousand flying swords, clustered there in the air, and they caused all of the spectators to be completely shocked. So many flying swords? What were they going to do? Every single one of the thousand flying swords was pointing directly to the five energies grand grappling hand ahead of them. Chop! Ning bellowed forth this single word. The thousand flying swords instantly blossomed into lotus flowers, and at the same time, they all chopped forward. The thousand flying swords had instantly transformed into a single, enormous sword light. Carrying irresistible power and majesty, they chopped forward. This single chop. It contained the invincible will of Ning's sword heart. In his past life, Ning had experienced the information explosion era. As the saying goes, one who enters the red dust of the mortal world one will depart while covered in it. The distracting thoughts generated by the information explosion era were even more astonishing than the distracting thoughts generated during the era of wandering barbarians. The experiences he had in this life, the lives and deaths of those he loved, the warmth of family. It was these things that allowed Ning's heart to slowly grow lustrous and be purified of those distracting thoughts. 
If a person were to live in a perfect utopia, a peach garden beyond all worldly matters, then perhaps that person would be able to maintain a pure, lustrous heart. But this sort of pure, lustrous heart would be a very weak one. Upon encountering any setbacks or seductions, it might easily crumble. But Ning had seen far too many things in his past life, in the information explosion era. Tormented and racked by pain, he had watched as others freely ran about, read books, had lovers, and more. How painful and tortured that had been. His heart had long ago been stained by the red dust of the mortal world. In this life, the love and warmth of family had slowly polished it bright, and now, his heart was all the stronger and all the more unbreakable. It was admittedly praiseworthy for someone who stood at the peak of a mountain to maintain perfect purity, but for someone to be born from the sludge to remain unsullied was even harder to do. This is my first stance of my three-foot sword. Chop! 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 Ning roared the word chop three times, and the sword light in his eyes was visible to the naked eye. That powerful sword intent, that mighty, irresistible will, it caused even those two immortals watching from afar to be moved. Boom! The thousand flying swords, linked into a single, massive burst of sword light, were all chopping in unison towards a single direction. Although that mighty, Heaven-defying Five Energy's grand grappling hand was able to resist for just a brief moment. With a mighty boom, it shattered apart like glass. 1. Red dust is a Buddhist phrase referring to the mortal world, and all the unhappiness that exists within it. For a similar reason, women of the red dust is actually an old-fashioned euphemism for prostitutes. Chapter 41, Yu Wei and Ji Ning Some of the extremely high-ranking disciples who had been seated, such as senior apprentice brother Holy Fire, the fat, sloppy-looking youth, and the black-robed maiden had all risen to their feet. Looks of shock were on their faces, and they stared, stunned, at the fur-clad youth atop the stone pillar in the distance. As for Northmont Black Current, located on the other stone pillar within the grand ceiling formation, his face had instantly turned ashen. I lost. I, how could I have lost? How could I have lost? Black Current's eyes were filled with disbelief. He was an incomparably prideful figure. He didn't even hold high-level members of the Northmont clan, such as main lineage members like Northmont Byway, with any regard. This was precisely because he was absolutely confident in his own abilities. But a new disciple who had just entered the school, and one who was extremely friendly terms with Byway to boot, had actually defeated him in a Tao debate, an arena he had been extremely self-confident in. It was that sword, that sword. Black Current's mind still clearly remembered that terrifying sword, that chop that was launched simultaneously by a thousand flying swords. It felt as though that chop had cut a scar straight into his Tao heart. What a terrifying sword. Only when facing that sword head-on can a person truly understand how terrifying it is. A sword with no regrets and nothing held back. A sword which nothing can block. Black Current's heart was filled with panic and disbelief that he had lost, but when he thought back to that sword, he felt completely powerless. Ji Ning wins! The white-haired elder shouted loudly, and the entire grand ceiling formation vanished. Senior apprentice brother Black Current, thank you for taking it easy on me. Ning's voice rang out, echoing throughout the entire Dao debate palace. Only now did Black Current come to his senses. He forcibly clamped down on the wild thoughts running through his mind, then clasped his hands and said, Junior apprentice brother, you truly are formidable. I sigh that I am inferior to you. After speaking, he released a bond with the golem, then transformed into a streak of light and left the arena. He handed the two jade bottles to the white-haired elder, and then, silently and wordlessly, entered the crowd of spectating fellow disciples. What a powerful sword! The fat, sloppy-looking youth mused to himself. In a few decades, our black-white college will have produced yet another formidable figure. Holy Fire had a hint of a smile on his face as he looked at Ning. In the entire Tao debate palace, only the two immortals truly understood that sword technique of Ning's. Lustrous sword heart. What a fine lustrous sword heart. The short elder's eyes were shining as he stared at Ning. Such a powerful sword heart, such a resolute sword heart, our black-white college has truly taken in a treasure this time. We have indeed. Immortal Dientsai was staring towards the distant Ning as well, and his eyes were blazing. I wonder, 
How in the world did this disciple of mine manage to generate a sword heart such as this in ten or so short years? The experiences he had did involve life and death, but for them to produce such a powerful sword heart, this is truly inconceivable. Ha ha ha, just you watch and see. Those other fellows are probably going to arrive soon. The short elder chortled. Immortal Diensai laughed as well. The short elder let out a weird laugh and said, They are definitely feeling regret as well. Regret for not having come to the Dao Debate Palace to watch in person. The headmaster of the Black White College, Daoist J.C., was currently seated in the lotus position on his bed. Above him, there was a watery scrying mirror which clearly displayed the discourses on the Dao that were going on within the Dao Debate Palace. That sword! A look of shock appeared on the face of Daoist J.C., who was so handsome that women would be infatuated with him. Can it be that he has embarked on the path of the sword immortal? Ugh! Daoist J.C. let out a regretful sigh. He could only see the images through water scrying, but the auras, the presences, the ripples of the world, all of the intricate details were lost. I'm going. Daoist Jade C didn't hesitate at all. Waving his hand, he made the water scrying mirror disappear, and then his body flickered and disappeared. Quite a few of the primal Taoists of the Black White College were watching this battle through the water scrying technique. When they saw that sword emerge, all of them were awestruck. However, because none of them had personally seen and sensed the sword in the Tao Debate Palace, they weren't completely certain of what it was either. Thus, all of them hurried towards the Tao Debate Palace, and even two of the immortals headed there as well. The third generation disciples who were in the Tao Debate Palace, in turn, had no idea about what was going on in the outside world. They were all chatting amongst themselves. Even Black Current had lost? Then who would be the next to stand forward? Black Current could be considered one of the top ten figures amongst those who had multiple Tao domains. Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, don't be so sentimental. It's just a set of flying swords. Senior Apprentice Brother Blood Shadow was currently chatting with Ning and offering to him that set of Heavenly Spirits, Earthly Fiends sword formation. Ning laughed. Fine. Then your Junior Apprentice Brother will accept it. The simple interactions Ning had had with Blood Shadow made him feel quite well disposed towards him. He accepted the set of flying swords, and by doing so, he was clearly acknowledging Blood Shadow as a friend. That's more like it. Blood Shadow nodded. Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, your talent is astonishing. However, the path of immortals is not one in which you can simply bury yourself in training. You also need to wander the world and experience many things for yourself. I imagine that in a few years at most, Junior Apprentice Brother Ji Ning, you will go out and adventure through the world. Most likely, you will also join the Rain Dragon Guard and whatnot. If there's anything you need, feel free to come find me. I'm quite familiar regarding the Rain Dragon Guard. When the time comes, I will definitely go and trouble you, Senior Apprentice Brother, Ning said with a laugh. Eh? Blood Shadow suddenly turned his head to look, and Ning did so as well. A figure had emerged from the third generation disciples. Her? Ning's pupils contracted. The person who had walked out was a black robed maiden. Previously, she had sat there, surrounded by others, even Nine Lotus had been by her side. Clearly, her status was extremely high. Junior apprentice brother Ji Ning. The black robed maiden walked over, then said in a cool, calm voice. I should be the most powerful of the disciples who have comprehended multiple Tao domains. If you defeat me, then it will naturally be up to Senior Apprentice Brother Holy Fire, and the others will come out to fight you. After finishing, she turned and moved towards the side room to select a golem. You are doomed. Blood Shadow sucked a cold breath. Who is she? Although Ning had a guess, he still asked the question. The Rainbow Flame Fairy, Yu Wei. Blaze Shadow spoke in a very soft voice. She is a reincarnated immortal, and her talent is terrifyingly great. When she had first entered the school, none of the old disciples chose to have a Tao debate with her. Her training speed is astonishing as well. She is currently just over 20 years old, but her power has already reached a frightening level. Ning was inwardly shocked. A reincarnated immortal? His master had also told him that there were only a total of three reincarnated immortals amongst the third generation disciples. Two had trained for over 80 years, 
while one had been training for over 20 years. The one who had been training for over 20 years was most likely this black-robed woman, Yu Wei. No wonder she said that she is the most powerful out of those who have comprehended multiple Tao domains. Ning mused to himself in shock. Junior apprentice brother, I'd like to help you, but I'm unable to. Blood shadow immediately departed. So what if she is a reincarnated immortal? She's just trained for 10 or so more years than I have, that's all. Although Ning was on high alert, he didn't feel the slightest bit of dread. Just a few moments later, Ning was atop the stone pillar in the arena, under the grand ceiling barrier, and he was staring in astonishment at the scene before him. He had released a thousand flying swords, which had combined to form the first stance of the three-foot sword, and the power of this attack was truly astonishing. But this rainbow flame fairy, Yu Wei, had actually also chosen the thousand words golem, and had also released the thousand flying swords, all of which had transformed into a sea of fiery sword light. A scorching sea of fiery sword light. A sharp, fierce sea of fiery sword light. An irresistible sea of fiery sword light. A head-on clash. A frontal clash. Although Ning's sword light was extremely sharp and extremely strong, that all-devouring flame was even more berserk. It smashed apart Ning's sword light, piercing past the protective armor of Ning's thousands words golem. Yu Wei wins! The white-haired elder called out. It was a clean, straightforward win. I lost! Ning rose to his feet and laughed. Senior apprentice sister, you are formidable. I wholeheartedly acknowledge my loss. When I was 16, I wasn't as strong as you are. The rainbow flame fairy, Yu Wei, gave Ning a glance. Right. Don't forget to give me those hundred black-white pellets and those five kilograms of liquefied elemental essence. Ning stared at her, instantly stupefied. He opened his mouth, but no words came out. Why would an exalted reincarnated immortal act as though she cared about the wager that much? What, did she think that he was going to welch on their bet? By now, the various primal Taoists had all arrived at the Tao Debate Palace. They made it just in the nick of time, and were just barely able to catch the sight of Ning battling against the Rainbow Flame Fairy, Yu Wei. All of them nodded inwardly. He really is a sword immortal. And what a powerful sword heart. In a few centuries, our black-white college will most likely produce yet another sword immortal that is comparable to Uncle Master Jian Tsai. In a corner of the Tao Debate Palace. Whoosh. Whoosh. Two more immortals had appeared next to Immortal Five Craze and Immortal Dian Tsai. One was a bearded old man with a crown on his head, while the other was a juvenile child who radiated an aura of infinite cold. Their arrival had not been noticed by any of the primal Taoists, or the third-generation disciples within the Tao Debate Palace. Sword Immortal! The crowned, bearded elder nodded as he spoke. He has indeed embarked onto the path of a Sword Immortal. Finally, our black-white college has yet another disciple who has begun to comprehend the Grand Tao of the Sword. Daos were divided into levels as well. Rainwater, ice, and whatnot. These were all just some of the countless Daos of the natural world. But the Tao of the Sword, however, was on a higher level. It was a grand Tao. Even gaining a basic understanding of it was extremely difficult. Zifu disciples would generally find it quite easy to comprehend a hint of the true meaning of the rainwater, and in fact, it wasn't even that impressive for them to comprehend a rainwater Tao domain. But the Tao of the Sword, as one of the grand Daos, even getting a basic understanding of it was extremely rare. And what a powerful sword heart. A sword heart like that, talent like that, and comprehension abilities like that. The juvenile child's voice was quite youthful, but his words rang out in a manner that seemed aged and sallow. He is indeed a piece of unpolished jade that can be sculpted into a mighty sword immortal. Right, right, right. The short elder nodded repeatedly. Our black-white college currently only has a single sword immortal, junior apprentice brother Dian Tsai. Now, we have another one. A sword immortal. Even if he is defeated by the tribulations and ends up becoming a loose immortal, he will still be one with astonishing combat power, haha. <laughs> the crowned, bearded elder instantly frowned and barked. Senior apprentice brother Five Craze, junior apprentice brother Dian Tsai is merely an earth immortal right now. He has a very good chance of becoming a celestial immortal. Don't say such negative things at a time like this. 
The short elder immediately looked towards immortal Dian Tsai. Junior apprentice brother Dian Tsai. But immortal Dian Tsai just laughed calmly. It's fine. It's enough so long as I act in a way which is true to my heart. It is precisely as Senior Northwalker said, it is better to live passionately for a day than to live a century while stifled. All I need to do is continue moving forward. Whether or not I can become a celestial immortal, that's secondary. Well spoken! The short elder nodded. As for the juvenile youth, he looked at immortal Dian Tsai. Junior apprentice brother Dian Tsai, Ji Ning is a second sword immortal for our black-white college. You must train him well. Immortal Dian Tsai turned his head, staring at the distant Ji Ning, who was handing over jade bottles to Yue. An eager light appeared in his eyes, and he slowly said, That is to be expected. He is my disciple, after all. Senior apprentice sister. A hundred black-white pellets and five kilograms of liquefied elemental essences. Here it is. Ning handed the two jade bottles to the rainbow flame fairy Yue. The black-robed Yue glanced at Ning, a hint of amusement on her face. Stretching her arm out, she snatched the bottles away from Ning, then turned and left. Please subscribe to A7 English Podcasts and enjoy listening every day with us. Thank you.